Morning everyone, magandang maga po. Um, we're still waiting for a few more uh, people to join us. So, umpisa po tayo ng mga 5 minutes so we can already proceed. We have two topics to discuss. So,
morning everyone. Magandang maga po sa lahat. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for uh, coming here to our uh, hearing. Uh, alam ko ho, in the next few days, a long weekend. So marami ho, eh, medyo vacation mode na. But uh, kikita nyo naman ho yung mga senators na masisipag. Katulad ni Senator Binay, di ba? So uh, again, thank you very much for coming in. And before we continue, uh, let me direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our resource persons for today. Good morning, sir. May we acknowledge the presence of Ms. Cas Casarina Abelionar, Project, Direc Project Development Officer 3, Liter Literacy Coordinating Council. Good morning, ma'am. Mr. Willie Katangi, Administrative Support 2, Literacy Coordinating Council. Mr. Roderick Corpus, Supervising Education Program Specialist. ASEC, Maria Teresa Habitan, Domestic Finance Group from the OF. Morning, ma'am. Pastor Ephraim Pitogo, President Sulades. Morning, sir. Professor Maria Mercedes Arsadon from the UP Diliman College of Education. Morning, ma'am. Mr. Joaquin Olitokit, Volunteer Teacher, ALS San Fernando, Camarines Sur. Mr. Mark Anthony Bergano from DepEd. Ms. Petronila Garcia, CTGP Board Member. Morning, ma'am. Attorney Ana Catarina Rodriguez, Director General, Commission ng Sawikang Filipino. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, today, we have two subject matters. One is to institutionalizing uh, the alternative learning system, and the other one is institu institutionalizing uh, the, the uh, teaching of good manners and right conduct. Uh, for the second topic, uh, there are two bills uh, that were filed, uh, one by Senator Zubiri and the other one was by Senator Villanueva. Uh, for the first topic, which is uh, alternative learning system, institutionalizing alternative learning system, it was filed by yours truly. Um, because of uh, the um, intention of Senator Villanueva to join us in, a, uh, in, in, in later, uh, uh, later on, uh, we will be uh, tackling the institutionalization of the alternative learning system first, which is Senate Bill Number 740. Uh, with that, uh, we'd like to hear, uh, first of all, we'll go by order. We'd like to hear first from the implementing agency, their position. Um, give us uh, an update on where alternative learning system is. And then later on, uh, we can go through the uh, different stakeholders who have uh, a stake in the uh, delivery of alternative learning system. So yun muna unahin ho natin and then um, later on uh, when Senator Joel joins us uh, we can go to uh, the uh, institutionalization of good manners and right conduct. With that, uh, we'd like to hear any statement. Oh, wala naman po statement Senator Binay. So we'll proceed with Senate Bill number 740. Uh, this is in short institutionalizing uh, the alternative learning system. So we'd like to hear uh, Samba from Mr. Roderick the uh, uh, maybe a brief history of alternative learning system, then where we are right now, and then what are the challenges? Now, because the point of institutionalizing alternative learning system is not only institutionalizing, you know, but also addressing the gaps, addressing the challenges, and more importantly, addressing the funding requirements because based on various researches, uh, one of the most pressing challenges is really addressing the funding gaps. No? So, gusto ko namin malaman, na hindi lang natin ginagawa to just to papogi lang, no? institutionalizing, but ginagawa natin to, to address the gaps as stated by various uh, stakeholders. So, Mr. Roderick? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning, uh, Okay. Um, the alternative learning system, uh, um, formerly known as the non-formal education, caters or provides learning opportunities for out-of-school children, youth, and adults 
uh, to provide uh, basic education and learning opportunities for out, uh, for the marginalized, like what is stated here in the in the proposed bill. Um, before there was a Bureau of Alternative Learning System that manages the implementation of the alternative learning system. Under the rationalized structure, organizational structure of DEPED, the implementation of alternative learning system um, is uh, the function of the former bureau was distribu distributed to the different uh, bureaus under the curriculum instruction. Uh, in, or uh, in order to provide a coordinated leadership of ALS as a priority program of the department and to ensure continued delivery of the inclusive quality, accessible, relevant, and liberating learning opportunities to out of school children, youth, and adults, an ALS task force was created through DEPED Order uh, 3, series of 2019 entitled Creation of Task Force as a, uh, as a focal point for the coordination and integration of the range of activities under the ALS roadmap towards the full development and operationalization of ALS 2.0. Uh, Mr. Chair, we're moving to 2.0, meaning we have a new curriculum which is aligned to the uh, K-12 curriculum but it's still uh, um, flexible. However, the task force is temporary and the department need a appropriate and permanent governance structure. Hence, we suggest to have, uh, to have a permanent uh, government structure. Um, the, the composition of the, the ALS task force was former uh, staff from, uh, from the defunct Bureau of Alternative Learning System and I'm part of that uh, task force, Mr. Chair. Currently, um, currently we have 4,876 mobile teachers nationwide, uh, 2,333 district ALS coordinators, and uh, uh, part-time 109. The district ALS coordinators, full-time and part-time, these are classroom teachers locally designated by the... Uh, I'm Ilan Yun. Uh, 2,333, Mr. Chair, for the full-time, and the part-time ALS coordinators, 109, Mr. Chair. This, the district ALS coordinators, both full-time and part-time, these are classroom teachers locally designated by the school's division superintendent to implement ALS. So for, for ALS, the permanent teachers are the mobile teachers, 4,876. To include the DEPED procured and DEPED partners, currently we have 9,535 uh, ALS teachers nationwide. So this number is not enough to, to, to address the learning needs of the out of school uh, youth and adult. So medyo mababa po talaga. And uh, these mobile teachers, uh, mobile teachers are required to enlist 75 learners. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, siguro, Mr. Corpus, and who may population? ng uh, potential students for EL. Uh, Mabasi po sa World Bank study, meron pong 3.6 million, pero we don't have a, a, a talagang real number, yung universe of the out of school. That's the reason why we're, we, we want to partner with this uh, DSWD to access po dun, sa listahan. Sa yes? uh, Yun po yung i-access namin, ma'am. Apo. But currently, inan yung naka-enroll? Uh, naka as of today, ma'am. We have uh, 6, uh, 623,329 ALS learners po. 623,329, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Currently enrolled po. But the, the enrollment for ALS is still continuous po. Kasi anytime naman po yung enrollment. Last... Siguro, ilan na yung nakagraduate sa program? Uh... For last year po, meron po kami na-serve na 840,000 uh, learners. Ang uh, nag-complete uh, uh, in the... Sorry. For yung number po, ma'am, yung talagang ano po, yung number ng completed the program, it's almost uh, 400,000 po last year. Pero ngayon po, wala pa po kami data because... Uh, for the completion, uh, the, the intervention, compared to the previous years, ang intervention nag-start lang po noong June, which is sem similar to the formal system. Yes, ma'am. Kaya po, continuous pa rin yung, yung enrollment for ALS. And uh, the, the, hopefully, the, the exam will, uh, will be administered next year. Doon po namin malalaman po ng 
kung ilan nyo na-complete. And not all enrollees in ALS ay nagtitake ng AND test because some of the learners, ang gusto lang po nila ay basic reading, writing, and numeracy. Then after that, they, uh, they go to uh, uh, pagtitinda mga world ano, na mag, uh, employment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, of, uh, compared to the previous years, this year, starting this year, because of the new curriculum, the, the passer of the secondary level of the alternative learning system is equivalent to junior high completers, Mr. Chair. Tapos, they, they are encouraged to enroll in the senior high in the formal system. Currently, because currently we're, we're, ano po, uh, we're uh, <coughs> uh, inaayos pa po yung curriculum for the senior high for ALS. That's the challenge, Mr. Chair. If we're going to uh, if you're going to implement the ALS for senior high school, uh, Mr. Chair, we don't have the permanent facilities and even the teachers, specialist teachers, to deliver the senior high school for alternative learning system, Mr. Chair. And currently, all uh, most of the uh, most of our teachers, the mobile teachers, are generalists. So the direction of the alternative learning system is to have team teaching with a formal system especially in the area of English, science, and math. We need the specialists of the formal system to deliver higher competencies in English and science and math. Para ho, we are assured of quality uh, basic education through the alternative learning system, Mr. Chair. That's it? Right. Kailan um, nag-umpisay ang ELS program natin ng bansa? 1999, as early as 1999, Mr. Chair, ang tawag po ay non-formal education. Non-formal. 1999 lang? But Apo. I read in the briefer, it has created, it has been created a long time ago. It was very informal, Mr. Chair, through, uh, I think uh, it's uh, through the time of uh, President uh, President Estrada, yung naging formal talaga na-establish yung non-formal education. And it was renamed as Alternative Learning System 2002. Nine, n kailan yun? 19... Nine, in 1999, Mr. Chair. But prior to that, there was already an... Answer. Adult education, Mr. Chair. Adult... What, what's it? What Ma, during, uh, MEX po ata yun, Mr. Chair. Huh? MEX. During MEX pa yun, Ministry of Education. Yes, correct. Anong Apo. year yun? Uh, Ministry of Education po, yung tawag. Apo. 1970s, mga ganun po, Mr. Chair. Di pa kami pinapakanak ni... Center B9 nun eh. Okay. O kung Center IB, baka pinanganak na yun. I'm trying to look for in my brief or nabasa ko yun somewhere. But in any case, yeah, during the Ministry of Education time, so even prior to 1999, meron nang ganitong yes. Yes, uh, sir, sir. mode of teaching, although it's not called ELS. But it has the same function and intention. So, my, my point of the matter is um, this is meant to deliver alternative mode of teaching to those who are not in school, correct? So, sino yung mga clients nitong ALS? Uh, the primary target of alternative learning system are out of school, a, a youth and adult, Mr. Chair. But in extreme cases, cases we also cater the learning needs of out of school children, extreme cases like in con uh, conflict with the law, uh, in conflict areas, and even in the rehabilitation centers. But we encourage the out of school to be mainstream, to go back to the formal system, Mr. Chair. This is a form of, uh, or a mode of teaching delivery to those who are not in school, correct? So lahat po ng hindi na sa school. Ito yung mode of delivery. Yes, Mr. Chair. Basta, uh, basta ang priority po, they are out of school youth, which is above the school age. Kasi po, we encourage the school age to be to be mainstream to the formal system. Iba mm -hmm. pa rin po kasi ni experience in the formal system. But in system. a perfect system, everyone should be in school. Be, Mr. Chair. Correct? Yes, in Mr. a perfect Chair. system, in a perfect world, dapat walang out of school youth, lahat na sa school. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, ang tanong ko, is there a need to institutionalize ALS? Yes, Mr. Chair. Kasi po, uh, kahit po sabihin po natin perfect, maging, maging perfect, there is still even pro, uh, even first uh, class, even the, uh, the progressive countries, developed countries, they have still out of school. So we need to to, to have that uh, alternative learning system. Okay. So and most of most of the uh, one of the reasons why they drop out is yung uh, for the female yung early pregnancy. 
for the female because uh, for the male yun naman pong uh, they need to uh, look for job okay. Mr. Chair itong itong uh, Yung uh, ALS system, uh, you're saying now that there's a need to institutionalize it. No? But I can also see from history that the alternative, uh, alternative learning system was uh, shuffled many times. No? Dati nasa Bureau of Alternative Learning System, tapos naging nasa Bureau of Curriculum Instruction, tapos ngayon mayroon task force na. No? So it was shuffled many times in different um, offices. But it was never abolished, no? Hindi naman, Mr. Chair. Hindi siya na-abolished. It yes. was, andun pa rin siya. Iba-iba yeah, lang ang... The, the problem with the current structure, Mr. Chair, dahil nga po napunta sa iba't ibang na-distribute, na, na the, the functions of the former bureau was distributed in the different uh, bureaus po ng CI. Wala po nag-provide nag, nag, ng technical leadership. That, that's the reason why the task force was created. Pero the, the program, nag-operate pa rin, sir. Is, is still being implemented. So, ang tanong ko, bakit, uh, kahit na hindi siya institutionalized, and looking at the uh, the history, uh, ELS will never be abolished, or will, ALS was not abolished, and, and will never be abolished no, because of the need. Ngayon, what can the institutionalization bring to strengthen ELS? Because you said kanina na kalangan, there's a need to institutionalize. Ano ba ang magagawa ng institutionalization to improve ALS? Considering that it was never abolished, no? it reincarnated in some form of or manner, pero hindi naman siya na-abolish. So ano ang pwedeng gawin ng isang batas para tumibay ang ALS? Sir, through this institutionalization, through this uh, Senate bill, uh, we are assured of the ano po, yung full support of the different stakeholders, especially on the budget, Mr. Chair, and even the, the resources na kailangan po ng implementation, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Oh. Mr. Corpus, di ba napanggit niyo ho, parang nagpapalit sa yung in charge of ALS, parang yun yung nagbabago. Yung curriculum ba nagbabago din? Ma'am, because of the new curriculum po, because of the K-12, nag-adjust, in-adjust po namin yung, yung curriculum po ng ALS. Pero kasi, di ba, through the years, nagbabago yung, ano ba, yung new department in charge of ALS. Um, historical ba, during those times, hindi yung ngayon lang dahil sa K-12, nagbabago din yung curriculum. Ito din po, ma'am. Apo, apo. Sumusunod po rin doon sa formal system curriculum to, to, to make sure that our graduates, to, or make, to ensure that our learners are parallel to the formal school graduates. Siguro, Mr. Chair, can we just request for, siguro, a sample? Yung, can you just submit to the committee yung Itong curriculum? Document. Yeah, okay, we will, we will ma'am, Mr. Chair. So, so in short, uh, bigyan nyo nga yung mga dahilan kung an institutionalization can strengthen this. Ano yung mga dahilan kung paano ang isang institutionalization can strengthen ALS? Based on the bills that you have read here in the house, uh, here in the Senate and also in the House, kasi sa House marami rin finale. Eh. So ano yung mga uh, things that you want to see in the bill so that ALS will be strengthened? One, Mr. Chair. Dapat yung human resource continues po, uh, like the mobile teachers. Second, the funding support for the implementation of alternative learning system. Because currently, Mr. Chair, the in the in the in the GAA, the alternative learning system uma access sa one uh, line item, which is the flexible learning options, which is that that uh, that line item ay nag may tatlong organi uh, tatlong program na nagshare. One is the alternative learning system. Second is the ADM, and the other one is the EIE, or Education and Emergencies. ADM? Alternative Delivery Mode, ma'am. Alternative Delivery Mode. It's flexible in nature, say, uh, like the formal system, but the focus, uh, the alternative learning system, ang, ang kinikater po ng ADM ay yung mga at risk of dropping out in the formal system. But they use the same curriculum with the formal system. And the last one? And the, uh, and the other one is the Education and Emergency. Uh, Miss, uh, ma'am. Ano naman yun? For, for the disasters po, lahat po uh, naman. Okay. And then how much is that budget for flexible? Uh, 
Ma'am, ano po, uh, portion, may percentage po na nag-share, yung tatlo, yung sa, kasama po yung ALS, ma'am. But we want to have a separate uh, budget line item for ALS para po talagang yung, yung, yung full implementation po ay ma-realize. Especially, we're moving to 2.0 and we want, uh, uh, mad, mad, uh, and we need more uh, support for to implement, to, to, to make it, uh, to, to realize yung program po. So you mentioned earlier, human resource, funding support. What else? The facilities, Mr. Chair, because we we are we are moving to uh, no, we we are planning to have the the senior high school. Because currently, the learning interventions are conducted in community learning centers. Now most most of the learning centers are barangay hall. Nakikigamit lang po kami na facility. And if you want to have quality, uh, quality learning delivery through alternative learning system, we need also the facilities like uh, computer labs and uh, laboratories kasi po with the, new with the new curriculum, mataas na po yung competencies and we need those uh, facilities, Mr. Chair. Um, what else? Human resource funding facilities? What else do you want to see in the bill to institutionalize it? Uh, another, Mr. Chair, is the career path ng ating mga mga teachers in ALS kasi in the current uh, in the current setup career people, path of teachers career path yes mr of chair teachers or students teachers learners. teachers okay and the last one ay kasi po yung bakit mga mobile teachers, mo, bakit teachers po, because ang mga mobile teachers if they want to be promoted especially the master teachers kailangan po nilang bumalik sa formal system pumunta sa formal system because no master teacher uh, item for mobile teachers for ex exclusive for the alternative learning system another for the in, the in the case of the learners we want to have that post program activity we want to have kasi po uh, after the after passing the END test ano po yung next step para sa kanila Yung po yung gusto din namin. We want to have a support also for the learners after, after the uh, after attending the the intervention in the alternative learning system, Mr. Chair. So these are the five items you want to see in the bill that you think uh, will strengthen the ALS program. Especially, Mr. Chair, uh, we want to have uh, also to have uh, a permanent uh, and appropriate uh, governance structure for ALS. Kasi po currently. Nasa task force po kami, and the task force is temporary. Ang tinitingnan po namin, what will happen to the task force after the administration, saan po pupunta, who will manage the alternative learning system if there's no specific office that will manage the implementation of the alternative. Kasi nga, uh, I was looking at ito, nakita ko, 1984, no, to establish as a livelihood training program. No? This is the uh, original um, oh, oh, original original uh, version of ALS and then uh, it uh, transformed into various uh, uh, various uh, um, program and then but along the way it was transferred to many different bureaus no that's the that's how I understand it and then now it's it has in fact correct me if I'm wrong no it has been reg relegated to a task force correct Coordination with the different uh, uh, bureaus of the, the department. So, anong, anong exact responsibility ng task force? We provide the technical leadership in all aspects uh, like the curriculum, the learning delivery, learning resources, and assessment uh, assessment of learning, but not the exit assessment, which is the accreditation and equivalency test, which so, is being managed by... When you say curriculum and delivery, uh, lahat sa inyo na yun. Yes, Mr. Chair. Fair coordinated in... Par, uh, in, co in coordination with the uh, with the different bureaus like your curriculum delivery bureau uh, curriculum development uh, delivery uh, curriculum development bureau of learning delivery and bureau of learning resources and like before po kasi wala talaga nag 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 spearhead doon sa, sa 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 process that's the reason why it was created so you, you mean uh, mr corpus kayo in charge of the curriculum and kayo in charge of the delivery which yes. are the teachers yes, and mr. the mobile ano yes mr chair mobile instructors no? So, lahat yan, administrative, ad administratively, is under the task force. Yes, Mr. Chair. What if the task force disappears? The, ayun po yun. That's the reason why we're requesting to have a permanent governance structure that will manage, that will, uh, that will provide technical leadership for the implementation of alternative learning. Task system. force kasi by nature is temporary. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, how come it was created such as such, hindi siya 
a permanent office. Hindi siya ginawang, let's say, kagaya before, no? Bureau of Alternative Learning System. Yes, Mr. Chair. But in under the rationalized structure, Mr. Correct, Chair. Correct, correct. Parang yung pinanggalingan niyo was already medyo permanent and then nag-shift back to... Because of the rationalization, ma'am. Kaya po, na, na, nag-ano po kami. Rationalization, yung rights, well, parang yung right-sizing. Yes, Ms. Yes, ma'am. It was more of that. Rationalization did not rationalize. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, oh. That's why my first question is there is there a need? Meron ba tayong need? And, um, okay, I, I think from all of the researchers that I've read, the World Bank is the most recent and the yes, most comprehensive no? because it's based on empirical evidence. And I've identified three pressing problems. Number one is the participation rate. No, if you're saying that there are 6,000 students enrolled out of the 3.6 million out of school youth, no, that's only... 600,000? 600,000, Mr. Chair. 600,000? 623, Mr. Chair. 6,000? 623,000? 623,329, Mr. Chair. So that's 0.01%. Yes, Mr. Chair. That's a challenge for us. How, uh, how so you're only... The ALS program natin is only teaching 0.01% of those who are in dire need of yes, education. Yes, Mr. Chair. That's the reason why we're, uh, we're, we're requesting for mobile teacher item para po address po kasi kapag hindi po na nadagdagan yun, baka dumami pa, mas mahirap pong i-address. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, so just for clarification, um, paano nyo i-differentiate yung <coughs> curriculum nyo sa curriculum ng TESTA? Kasi di ba nabanggit nyo na kinikater nyo din yung adults, which kinikater din ng, ng TESDA. So, paano nyo pinag- Ma'am, in terms of ano po, uh, sa literacy sa amin po, ma'am, literacy component, and for the informal education, which is part of the non-formal uh, alternative learning system, we top the, the instructors of the TESDA. Para for, meron kayong convergence ng yes, TESDA. Yes, so, Mr. Chair, yung bill medyo may participation din ng test da. Dapat, di ba? They should be part of the program. And maybe in the next hearing, we can yeah. invite them. B, uh, Center B. Na. In fact, in Valenzuela, linagay namin yung ALS Center namin beside the Polytechnic School. Uh, precisely to funnel into the uh, Polytechnic uh, 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 facilities namin because we figured that passing the a &E is not enough. You have to teach him skills no? or else the a &E is nothing. No? So, my next, uh, no, uh, one pressing problem is participation rate. Number two is the equivalency. No? Ilan ang pumapasa doon sa a &E, Sa equivalency natin. Out of that 600, no? on the average, ilan ang pumapasa? Uh, I think 300 yun, Mr. Chair. Half, 50 per, uh, almost 50 percent. Kasi not na... Ano no, average to for the next, for the last many years, no? Ano ang, last five hindi, years, ano ang average hindi. natin? More or less 30, lang. 30, mga, mga 30 percent huh? po. Just give us a ballpark uh, figure. Mga 30 percent, Mr. Chair. The reason why, one of the reasons, dahil po hindi po yun, na, napupos po, nadidelay po lagi yung ating, uh, most of the time, nadidelay po yung administration ng AND test, kaya hindi rin po Ganon, kaya yung in business na nag-ano, yung mga nag-register, hindi ko lahat. Hindi ko ba fix yung exam? Like, every, ma'am, uh, ano once po, a year, twice of, a year, ma'am? It's twi once, once a year, year ma'am. But the problem po kung minsan, yung, yung uh, sorry po, yung pro yung procurement, medyo nadidelay din po yung ating, ano, ating administration. Pero nakakandak nyo naman once a year. Nakakandak nyo naman once a year. So just to give 30% of those who enrolled pass, Apo. Correct? Those, oh. eh, pero Mr. Chair, so, so not necessarily yung 600,000 will take the exam, yes. diba? Apo, Mr. So, Chair. out of the 600,000, ilan lang, ilang, ilan lang percentage yung takers nun? And then, yung takers na yan, ilan yung papasa pa dun sa exam? Apo. Mr. Chair, uh, with yung ganung detail, maybe we can ano po, send, submit the data, the specific po, yung, yung talagang data to the Secretariat.
nandito naman kayo kung ilan yung um, nag-pursue pa to go for higher education. May ganun kayong data gano'n? Meron, meron naman po, ma'am. But uh, we, 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 uh, we want to strengthen din po yung tracer study kung saan po talaga napunta din yung mga learners natin. Sige. Baka you can also submit sa committee kung Apo, yung mga ganun data. Thank you, ma'am. Let me just uh, get, I'm trying to run the numbers now. So, out of the 3.6 million out-of-school youth, no, uh, 600,000 ang naka-enroll. No? And out of the 600,000 ang naka-enroll, only 180 ang pumapasa. 180,000, kasi 30%. Eh. Mr. Chair, ano po? Apo. Uh, Mr. Chair, hindi po lahat ng mga nag-enroll sa ALS ay magte-take ng A&D, magre-register okay. uh, magre and take the A&D. Uh -huh. So, kung, kung titingnan po natin, kung 600,000 yung ano, 623,000 to be specific, uh -huh. mga ano lang po siguro, mga 300,000 lang yung magre-register uh, mag for the A&D test. Konti lang po talaga, Mr. Chair. So, 300,000 lang ang magre-register? Apo. Mga ganun, average po. For the test. And out of the 300,000... 30% lang ang pumapasa. Tama? To 40, Mr. Chair. Pero pinakamalaki po yung last na ano na umabot ng almost uh, 6 70% po ang pumasa. De, on the average, let's, let's uh, mga mga ter, mga 40 50 mga ganun, Mr. Chair. Mga 40%? 50 50% na lang mga po. 40%. 40%. Sure. So 300,000 times 40%, that's 120,000. Correct? Ang pumapasa ng exam. Mr. Chair, para lang po maging, ano po, uh, we will submit the... Oh, but more or less, for discussion purposes lang. Uh, mga, so, have something yung, on hand. Dapat yeah. din alam mo na yan ngayon para uh, mabilis. Sorry, eh. Mr. Chair. Kung, uh, kaya hindi tayo, kaya ako may nagko-compute oh, dahil wala kang dalawin. Sorry, Mr. Chair. So, no, para lang mayroon tayong discussion point or else we, we won't be discussing anything. Siguro, Mr. Chair, meron ba kayong siniset na target? Like, for, kanyari, for this... For, I mean, this this year, ano yung target nyo na ma-reach na mga... Uh, Ma'am, uh, for, for this year po, ang target po namin is 720,000. For this year, 720,000. So, nakakailan na kayo for this 623, year? 623,000, Ma'am. Pero ongoing po yung enrollment sa L, uh, enrollment po namin, uh, encoding sa Learn Information System. Learner Information. Okay, that is your target. But what is the ultimate goal? Ano bang goal nyo for the 720,000? Ang goal nyo ba eh mag-pursue sila ng higher ed or basically magkaroon lang sila ng uh... Ma'am, ang, ang goal po kasi po yung end goal po namin is one, yung to continue yung sa basic education, they need uh, they need to uh, to to finish their basic education, makapag-enroll sa sa senior high at ma-complete. Second is uh, for the world of work kasi hindi naman po lahat ay uh, nagko-continue sa, sa sa high school that's the reason why we're offering po yung yung skills training uh, literacy and skills training para paglabas po nila even complete uh, pag na-complete yung journey hire naging productive po sila ma'am All right no, I'm, I'm just again computing no just to give context so 3.6 million out of school youth of which 300,000 exam takers, of which 120,000 will pass the exam. No, that's, uh, we're saying that that's uh, 30%. Uh, Itong 120,000 is 3.3% of the 3.6 million. So in other words, sa 3.6 million na out of school youth natin, 120,000 lang ang kumapasa ng exam. No? Kasi the ALS is meant to give a second chance in education. Eh. So, ang gusto ko malaman, ilan ang nabibigyan natin ng second chance? So, on the average, na just, ito naman is just a ballpark figure, only 120,000 lang ang nabibigyan natin ng second chance in life or second chance in education. 
Ngayon, ilan sa 120,000 ang may trabaho doon? Ano ba nangyari doon sa 120,000? Do they go... Kasi eventually, ang gusto natin, may trabaho eh. ba? Diba? At the end of the day, we want them to be employed, no? gainfully employed. Ilan ba doon ang gainfully employed? Meron ba kayong tracer study? Uh, Mr. Chair, wala pa po kami tracer study, but we uh, meron po kami data as to how many ang nagpunta ng college at merong... merong... How, many, how, many per, how many percent ang pumunta ng college, how many ang nagtrabaho? Do you have that study? Wala, Mr. Chair, but we uh, but we requested the, the regional offices na mag-submit ng data nila kung alin yung ilan po dun sa mga learners nila na nakater ang nag-college at saka nag... nag, uh, nag... You track that <coughs> every year kasi we have to measure whether ALS is uh, success, mm -hmm. successful or not. No? Uh, for for starting this year po, magkakaroon po talaga ng tracer study because with the new, impl with the new curriculum, we want to know where are, the, where are our learners and uh, anong kung sa uh, kung nag college ba or nag 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 uh, nag land to a job or nag ano nagtrabaho. Look, kasi part of the reason why ALS is not take, being taken seriously is because we're not measuring it. So, hindi natin alam yung mga information eh. No? So that's why if you look at the history of ALS na pinipingpong lang, it's not being taken seriously. It's good parang it's you know, it's it's nice to have but Para lang masabi na meron tayong else, but it's not being taken seriously. If we're saying that this is a second chance in education, but we're not even measuring it kung ano nang nangyari dito sa 120,000. For 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 this starting this year, Mr. Chair, as part of the ALS 2.0, uh, ang plan po, it's part of the roadmap, is to have the, uh, to conduct the tracer study, and every year we're going to have uh, program audit. To ensure that the, the, the implementation of the program is, uh, is still uh, based on the standards. But in the past, wala, no? Obviously, wala, 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 wala information. And so, wala tayong measure of success, Mr. Of Chair. success. Uh, actually, may mga documentation, Mr. Chair, but uh, as to the tracer study, eh, eh, wala po tayong, Mr. Chair. Okay. May um, documentation of the success stories of, uh, of the passers of the yeah. A&D. Which is disappointing dahil... Um, every year, we, I know for a fact that we are giving uh, budget to this, no? we, albeit it's not big, no? but uh, still it's hard-earned money by the taxpayers to the ALS system. And we're just doing ALS for the sake of doing ALS. We're not taking it seriously because we're not measuring it. No? Mr. Chair, we can ask si Mr. Ali to quit. <laughs> Kasi siya yung nasa ground eh. As a volunteer teacher, baka he can share more stories. This is my first time to attend a, a hearing in the Senate. I am from San Fernando, Camarines Sur. I have worked with ALS from the year 2005 as a volunteer. I don't receive any salary from the government. I spend my own money for my motorbike and the gasoline, but I'm deeply committed to the ALS. <clears throat> uh, Honorable Chair, I'm very happy that you filed Senate Bill number 740. I have long dreamed that we will arrive to this point in our involvement with ALS. <clears throat> I earned my living before as a worker for NGOs, but my engagement with ALS, I'm already a simple farmer. I happened to get involved with ALS because of my wife, who was designated as a District Alternative Learning System Coordinator for the municipality. There are 22 barangays in San Fernando, in Camarines Sur, and we had, in the CBMS survey of uh, 2008, we had more than 3,000, I think 3,541 in elementary and uh, out of school. Some barangays had very high figures, like 72% were out of school. The average was about 36 to 40, and I was shocked with that. 
uh, enough to now malaking palaisipan sa akin kung Sir, bakit can, ang mga... can, you can you repeat that again? Kasi what? ulit yung kaninang sinabi niyo. What? what? Itong, itong percentage lang. Uh, we had barangays, like barangay marangay had 72% of its school age population out of school. Some had 45, 46. The lowest, I think, was uh, 25. I, I don't have the data with me, no. I should have brought the data. Uh, it was a 100% survey by the CBMS of the Municipal Mayor's Office. So we were working on that data. And it was very shocking. And isang teacher lang ang involved, yung asawa ko. And they had to travel to the different barangays to to oversee these things. She started with zero. Wala ni folder. Wala. Yung, yung asawa niyo ho was not under that. Ed. Was... He, she, she's a public school teacher in an elementary school. When she was designated, inalis na siya sa school at naging full-time siya doon sa sa ALS. So, ang, Under the Deaf Ed pa rin Yes, pa, yeah. The ALS was very organized during the time of Secretary Carol Guerrero. There was a Bureau of Alternative Learning System. And we were hoping na yung omnibus ALS should have been enacted during her time. But it was not, it was not passed. I don't know what happened, no? Uh, but to tell you frankly, malaking uh, ang, ang, ang joke ko nga kay Teacher Arsa doon, I, I'd like to give credit to her because she was the one who invited my wife to be here. But my wife is uh, is so busy. So she asked me last night to, to come instead. Sabi niya, involved ka naman. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking her instead. Uh, kailangan, kailangan po yung ALS kasi uh, napakalaki ng populasyon na hindi nag i sa aming bayan. And uh, sa akin, kung susukatin lang yung nakapasa doon sa ANA, maling pagtingin yon Maling mali. In fact, malagal na namin sinasabi sa National Office ng DPED, hindi yung ANA ang gawin nating sukatan. Ang gawin nating sukatan ay yung mga nag-aaral kung anong mangyayari sa kanilang buhay. I'll give you an example. Uh, in, in, some, in some of the barangays, we're, we're so frustrated na napakaliit ng aming passer. Hindi kami umaabot nga ng 50%. Maswerte na kung umabot kami ng 25% yung nagtitake ng exam. Hindi pa lahat nag exam kasi takot sila sa exam. No? Oo. Napakababa po ng, ng, ano, ng intellectual capability ng, ng mga bata ng out of school na, na mag-take ng exam. Yung talaga medyo bright lang talaga ang, ang nag-take. Siguro, Mr. Joaquin, ano yung primary reasons kung bakit hindi sila pumapasok sa uh, formal schooling? Kasi sinabi sinabi ni Sir, niya, yung mga 70%. pregnancy, yung mga naghanap ng trabaho, kahirapan. Pero I will tell you the truth. Ang theory ko, nahirapan sila as they go higher. Ma maniniwala ba kayo na marami kaming ALS teacher, ay eh, estudyante na hindi marunong bumasa, sumulat, ah, ah, mag-spelling, magkwenta, na high school level na, nag-drop out. Maniniwala ba kayo ngayon ang programa namin ay reading program kat kasabay ng programa namin sa out of school. We launched the Buklaton program going targeting the elementary students para magbasa sila, makomprehend nila yung leksyon. Kasi ang theory namin mag-asawa, kaya sila hindi umaangat sa public school. Nahirapan sila mag-cope. And one of the problems is really hindi nakakapagbasa. Hindi marun magbasa yung teachers o yung learners? But as you said earlier, the, some of the learners, the, some of the teachers cannot no, no. spell. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I got so excited, I think. Uh, yung learners na nakukuha namin, especially sa four piece, kasi ni-require ngayon ng DSWD yung mga naka-enroll sa Porpis na mag-enroll sa ALS. Napakalaking prosyento sa kanila hindi marunong magbasa, sir. Very poor. Ang reading ability at reading comprehension, hindi sila makakapasa doon. Kaya sinasabi namin sa DepEd, huwag na nating sukatin yung, yung A&E. Siguroin natin na kung dumaan sa atin, matuto silang magbasa una. Matuto magkwenta. 
at magkaroon ng anak buhay. I'll give you an example. Maraming barangay kami sa mountain barangays. The very poor barangays. Na nag-aral ng ALS. Na na hindi sila nag-exam pero may trabaho ngayon. Bakit? We 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 had a partnership with Casifmas. It's a technical public public school. Uh, nag-aral sila ng electronics. Nag-aral sila ng uh, electrical installation uh, in management. Naging mga electrician. Naging factory worker. Welder. Pero hindi sila nakapasa sa sa ANE. Inilusot nga namin yon kasi ang gusto ng kasipmas, dapat pasado ka muna sa ALS. Eh sabi namin, eh, hindi pa yan nakapasa, nag-aaral pa yan, pero gusto mag-aaral. Eh nakumbinsi namin, so nagkaroon na job recruitment, pumasa silang uh, factory workers sa electronics, andyan ngayon sa Laguna. Tontuwa yung magulang nila, uh, nagre-receive sila ng sweldo buwan-buwan. Yung isa nga, naging electrical electrician supervisor, 20,000 ang sweldo niya ngayon. Nasa Cebu. Mr. Wilkin, before we continue, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, presence of Senator John Villanueva, who is an expert in livelihood and technical vocational education. So we're very honored and privileged na kasama natin siya because I really believe the end goal is not the equivalency. The end goal is to get a job no? as fast as possible. No? That, is, ma ma that, that is our na, mantra, sir. Uh, that is our mantra. Mm -hmm. But you were saying ngayon, nakatrabaho, na meron silang trabaho na hindi naman pumasay ng A&E. Correct. So, hindi na kailangan ng ALS. Wrong. Di ba ho? Bakit sila nagkatrabaho? Dahil numaan sila sa ALS. Sa Pero amin. hindi sila pumasa. Hindi sila nakapasa. Okay. Ang sinasabi ko nga, huwag natin gawing sukatan yung nakakapasa sa A&E. Mali yun. Mr. Chairman, if I may. You may, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, uh, good, good morning. And uh, let me point out, I think, very important uh, uh, point raised by our uh, distinguished resource person here. I think uh, the bottom line that you're talking about is that when you do assessment, you make a point that uh, uh, it is when you graduate or when you pass that particular assessment tool, you are relevant. You will be able to land jobs. You are competent. And just as you were mentioning kanina, sir, um, hindi naman talaga totally pwede na totally hindi ka nakakabasa papasa ka sa mga test the national certification because part of the general program and core competencies of any national certification of test is you have to read yung basic basic uh, if you're in the field of uh, construction or field of welding or elect electrical uh, maintenance kailangan alam mo yun kasi yung safety features kailangan alam mo so yun yung basic and i think it is important to note mr chair yung pag gagawa tayo ng exams ng test assessment alam din natin kung ano yung goal natin that once you pass the assessment, the, 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 the exam, alam natin kung ano yung capability. Alam, at yun yung gusto natin mangyari. And as you mentioned, kung ang gusto natin mangyari is makatrabaho, then ang assessment tool mo is that it is based on the requirements of the industry. If they can perform duties and responsibilities na, na, na hinahanap ng industriya, then they are ready to, to, to land jobs. They are ready to... to uh, to be employed. So I think that's that's the bottom line, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, I think yun yung hindi natin dapat uh, alisi, alisan o iwanan dito sa programa ng ALS. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, that's the reason why po we are pushing for the micro-certification na lahat ng competencies dapat po ma-certify kahit hindi po mag-take ng A&D test para po masabing this, this learner para po na, na they can perform kung ano po yung expected ng isang isang company based on the set the, the, the set competencies by certain industries. Kaya po, we are pushing for the micro-certification, Mr. Chair. I, I dug up the amount of money that we give to ALS. In 2017, is about 333 million. In 2000, uh, sorry, 633 million. And then in 2018, is 533 million. So... Although you are saying that this is not enough to cover the 
million students. But I think this is enough already to have some form of success measure. Success or maybe unsuccessful. Um, it's important really to measure, even though kulang ang tempondo, pera pa rin ang taong bayan to eh. And we need to be accountable to our people na ginagastos natin itong 333, uh, 633 million ng tama. No? So that's why I'm quite disappointed na wala tayong measure. And since uh, 19, ano ba ito? 1984 pa natin ginagawa to, But we don't really know whether the money that we are pouring in this program is successful or not. No? So just to move forward, this will not be the last hearing. We'll have another hearing. But I want a full uh, presentation of the success, the number of students enrolled, passing rates you know, for the last maybe 10 years, and the amount of budget that we have given DepEd for the ALS program. All of this should be quantified and made accountable. So, gusto namin malaman exactly kung ano ba nangyari. No? All of these kasi are just estimates, eh? but we cannot move forward with estimates. We need to have accurate numbers. No? And um, on top of that, um, alam ko maraming issues dito, no? one of which is manpower. You mentioned earlier the human resource. Can you elaborate kung anong... Uh, what do you want to see improved in the human resource? No? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we want to increase the number of mobile teachers, Mr. Chair, because the DALCES, district health coordinators, like um, Mr. Joaquin mentioned a while ago, that DALCES po are temporary, locally designated by the school's division superintendent. They can be recalled. Ang permanent lang po sa ALS are the mobile teachers, which is 400, uh, 4,500, Mr. Chair. And the other groups uh, uh, procured the uh, partners. Mr. Chair, uh, na pagito 4,500. Can you submit sa committee kung saan nakakalat itong 4,500? Sige po, uh, it will be part of the document na isa submit po namin. Uh, during I the... always believe in uh, the quality of instructors. Eh. Uh, and I always believe that the quality of instructors reflect the outcome. No? So, for example, kung sinasabi natin 300,000 yung kumuha ng exam, sana yung 300,000 pumasa. I think that is a good figure. Even though we didn't capture the entire 3.6, at least 100% in passing. Ngayon, because 30, you mentioned earlier that around 40 to 30%, 30 to 40% ang passing natin, then there must be some improvements that we can make in the delivery of the program, no? which is the instructors. Ngayon, I also understand that the instructors are not full-time. My part-time, my full-time, and you said earlier, generalist. No? So, what improvements do you want to see to improve outcome? The objective here is 100% passing rate. No? So, even though we give you all the money that we will give you, but if the instructors are not equipped to teach, then we will have problems also. So, ano yung improvement ang gusto niyo makita? First, Mr. Chair, the, uh, yung mga i-hire namin should be specialists. They, they, should be, they should be the one to teach in the junior, junior high school level. Second, um, <coughs> yung uh, district monitoring po talaga, yung supervision. Uh, instructional supervision is, in, uh, is important to ensure that the teachers are, are implementing the, the program based on the standards. And third, para ko talagang ma-encourage ma sila, ay yung career path din po kasi may mga magagaling na teachers na para pa mo promote pumupunta, bumabalik po sa formal system. Yun yun po yung laging sinasabi din po sa amin. And continuous capacity building for our teachers para to keep them abreast with the update. Uh, with the... You're looking at a full-time staffing. Yes, Mr. Chair. So hindi na volunteer system. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kasi alam ko may mga marami tayong volunteer uh, teachers. Eh. Yes, Mr. Although Chair. Although a lot of them are uh, come from different backgrounds. No? So, what reform do you want to do in order to improve the teaching uh, delivery? Full-time na gusto niyo? Full, and full specialist? Time. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, hindi na tayo kukuha ng volunteer system? Kasi, Mr. Chair, uh, some of the volunteers, Mr. Chair, 
yung yung the the qualification standards kasi karamihan po ng mga volunteers are under partners organizations faith based organizations so the the their the qualifications ay which is based on the minimum standard set by the national so medyo mas mababaho ng konti if we are going to have that full time we want to have uh, to to be mga specialists na to, to make sure that the the, the competencies na i-deliver nila ay tama and and based on the standard so mayroon pa rin tayong may mga partners kayo eh, no the partners are the, the these are the organization that yes mr chair that teaches us yes mr no? chair but yung quality ba nitong partners no are you monitoring or merong yes mr chair nagpo-provide din ng mga ng, ng technical assistance currently for the partners we have individual uh, individuals uh, volunteer po 1719 organizations 90 organizations implementing ALS. Mostly these are faith-based organizations po. And do you give uh, some budget to these organizations? Uh, for the partners, Mr. Chair, we don't provide uh, budget. So we purely only provide only voluntary they use, they're, they're using their own resources, Mr. Okay. Chair. And how are the performances of this organization? Are uh, they performing better? Uh, are they performing the, worse? Hindi Meron naman po, Mr. Chair. Meron ba kayong measure doon? No, kasi meron kayong dalawa eh. May DepEd, mayroong volunteer, di ba? Who is performing better? Anong performance itong dalawa? Kasi may may chain of thought. Eh, baka na lang natin lahat sa partners. Di ba? Because they're more passionate. They're doing it on their own volition eh. Di ba? Baka they're more passionate. Bigay na lang natin yung pondo doon. Kaysa we have our own. I mean, I'm just thinking that's why I want to, meron ba tayong ganun na measure? Ma'am? Uh, uh, I'm from the UP College of Education and we've been doing a study on ALS since 1999. Uh, we found that itong mga NGO na to, yun nga, many of them are more committed kasi they are able to pay full time. Unlike itong mga kunyari, mo mo mobile teacher, they would go to various barangay. So, meron silang, uh, at least nakalibre ang gobyerno, no? kasi silang nagbabayad. Uh, it's part of their mission, outreach. And then, mer meron holistic pa, may counseling, especially for those na may problema. So, they provide counseling. And like M. Lala, uh, motor trade to. Eh. Ito, yung NG, uh, ito yung kanilang uh, CSR, meron mga training sa te uh, tech book, ganun. So, merong edge. Kailan kasi, ang edge naman ng DepEd, dahil alam nila yung test, <laughs> uh, sanay sila sa, you know, teaching to the test. So, natutulungan nilang makapasa. Pero itong NGO, in terms of holistic development and uh, life skills, uh, effective sila. Pero, based on study ng PIDS, halos pareho lang sila. I, know, I don't know what PIDS uh, use, ano? Pero yun nga, yung concern namin is hindi lang yung 3.5 million na dropouts ng school age up to 17 years old. From 17 to 24, meron pang 15 million all in all. And then, kala, uh, more than 50% ng ating population hindi nagtapos ng high school. Ano? Tapos, pag pumupunta ako sa mga international conferences, ang Pilipinas, ang highest sa uh, dropout. Eh, hindi naman tayo mas mahirap. Mas mahirap pa nga yung ibang bansa. Pero ang taas natin sa dropout. So, kaya na-feature ang UNICEF ang, ng Pilipinas ano, sa study. Kasama ko si Sir John, ano Kaya ang isang, uh, tapos historically, very effective yung Office of Adult Education ng 1936. Nung separate siya. Pero in 1972, nung nilipat na siya sa Public Instruction or DepEd, humina na siya. No? Kasi kasa, isa na lang siya sa mga produkto ng... Deped. So, nakikita namin na kung meron siyang sariling identity, historically, uh, lalo kung nakakabit siya ng, sa TESDA, for example. Kasi ngayon, kailangan ng ibang TESDA centers, high school graduate ka para tanggapin. Eh, sa TR naman, hindi naman re uh, requirement ang high school. Ano? So, sabi ko, baka naman pwede TESDA na lang um, para meron na lang siyang literacy component. <laughs> Para diretso na, hindi na yung dadaan pa sa DepEd, and then TESDA, eh, nung unang panahon naman, yung Office of Adult Education, TESDA and DepEd yan. Ano? So, maybe we can see the possibility of TESDA providing uh, literacy and ano, ano. And then for those who would like to go to college, uh, yung mga gusto magkolehyo, kasi marami naman talagang learners na gusto nilang magkolehyo. Ano? Kailang dahil may sakit sila, 
uh, nagtatrabaho, so hindi nila kayang pumasok araw-araw. So ano kung yung open high school, mas, mas wider, baka yun ang possibility, you know? So kailangan natin strengthen din ang ALS for those, especially for those who'd like to go to university. At uh, very, pa, uh, you know, maganda yung ating equivalency program. Bihirang bansa ang mayroong equivalency. At tayo lang yung may equivalency mula basic ed, ALS, PEPT, and then sa college mayroong ETIAP. Ano? So we recognize prior learning, informal learning. Kaya yung mga learners, kahit hindi sila nag-elementary, nakakapasa sa high school ALS. Kasi they learn from work. Like kunyari sa UP, yung mga taga-Xerox, binabasa nila yung sinisirox nila. So, what I mean is, dapat yung A&E, kasi ngayon po, ang requirement ng DepEd, kahit matandang-matanda ka na, dadaan ka pa sa klase, bawa ka mag-A&E. Sana, mas i-open to, kunyari kung 25 and above, or you know, 30 years old, anyone can take the A&E, so that they can qualify to, you know, go to ladderized education, or higher ed. So, yun ang, mayroon kaming proposal eh, sin, uh, we gave it to your office. And then, gusto namin yung sinabi nyo na bring ALS to every barangay. You know, si Sir Ritukit can say na sana yung barangay literacy worker magkaroon ng item, allowance. Kasi yung mobile teacher, marami siyang hawak na barangay. So, minsan absent siya kung may training. So, at least kung mayroong barangay literacy worker, tututukan niya yung pagre-recruit, pagtuturo, pag-organize. Sana nakatutok siya sana para tumaas ang passing rate or whatever, ano? So, sana mayroon ding place sa barangay kasi minsan parang squatter, palipat-lipat. Mayroong place sa barangay. Buti at least sa Valenzuela and sa Davao and, you know, Agoola Union. Marami silang mga permanent structure, I don't know, ma'am, sa Marikina for ALS, ano? So, sana lahat mayroong ganong klase, ano? Tapos, ah, mayroon din sana sa OFW kasi maraming learners Gusto namin makapasa sa high school para tumaas naman yung level namin. And it's an opportunity to teach them about, you know, safe sex. Kasi, you know, yung issue na ganyan. So, eh, problema, paano po kami, eh, hindi kami makaka-attend. Months a week, year lang ako nakaka-uwi. Pwede bang online? So, may mga ganun silang request, ano. So, siguro kung mayroong online A&E for our OFW. Tapos yung mga anak nila na nandun, hindi naman nila ma-afford pa aralin sa mga international schools. So maybe that can be an opportunity for them. So can I uh, just to uh, butt in, ma'am? Uh, yes, I, 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 I totally agree with what you're saying. I think it's important to note that uh, uh, yung recognition prior to learning, uh, kung papasok ka at uh, binabanggit kanina ni Sir, marami sa ating mga kababayan, pag binigyan mo ng test paper, ah, ganun ba? Fill up ko yan? Hindi na. Uh, ma... ma, ma, ma May, may stigmatize, ma to turn off ka agad. So importante talaga yung yung approach din natin eh. Uh, equivalency program, you made mention about it, very very important. But I also wanted to 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 ask you about if there's any assessment as to whether or not yun nga yung program of depth ed or faith based man ito or or or, or volunteer na employ ba sila or, when you talk about employment rate of 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 our graduates. Um, thirty percent. Sorry, paki ano yung microphone. <laughs> so thirty percent ang increase ng likelihood ng employment if they pass the A and E test. Oh, and that is with the public sector or? Ah, uh, hindi pa naka specified hindi si na ka specified. That, ano that's that's what I'm asking because at the end of the day, as mentioned by our chair. What is important is we find out ano yung mas effective way of doing it, no? Uh, binanggit nyo rin ganina na kahit na nagtatrabaho na, kahit na nagtatrabaho na, they wanted to to get something, eh. Diploma, national certification. Yes, sir. And, and that's why when we were in TESDA, I think they're still doing it right now. They, they we, we came up of assessment centers in, in, in Hong Kong, in Middle yeah, East, right. etc. And nagkakaroon sila ng national certification. Tumataas yung dignity of work nila, uh -huh. eh. And I think it's very important. So, itong mga bagay na ito, uh, na-incorporate ba ito sa, sa, sa mga programs natin mm -hmm. sa ALS? Kasi nga, sa ating kultura, no, we are a highly credentialized society. Kahit magaling ka kung wala kang papel na ipapakita. No? Kunyari, and, and, and before, pag wala kang diploma sa bahay mo, pag uh, pinasok ka ng bisita mo, walang diploma, walang college diploma, 
wala ka, hindi ka uh -oh. successful. Kaya, so, that's, the, the pension for diploma is, 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 yeah, is, is too much na ang daming na turn off sa tech book, kaya wala kang mag-tech book nun eh. Oh, And yet, ang daming, mas maraming hindi nagkakatrabaho, nag-graduate ng uh, kolehiyo mm -hmm. kasi, kaysa dun sa tech yun ang initial na capital nila eh. Kasi, kung, pero kung nakapasok na marami na silang uh, experience, mas, mas madali na. No? Kaya po ang isa naming proposal, sana yung diploma, huwag pang galing sa DEP, Dep Ed Pasig. Kasi yung mga batang galing sulu kung may mistake sa diploma nila, uh, sa, nabibigay ng DepEd, hirap kaya sana division office na magbigay ng diploma, uh, pati yung test. Kasi ang curriculum ng DepEd should be contextualized, localized, indigenized. Ito naman nung pwede na yung DepEd Pasig lang gagawa. So we are promoting a test that is contextualized. Gawa, gawin na siya sa division. At wag lang paper and pencil, like you said, adult learners. Like what we do in ETIAP, dadalawin sa trabaho, titignan mo kung nagpe-perform siya, no? So, dapat mas, uh, you know, performance-based, uh, portfolio. Yun naman talaga original design ng ANE in 1999, portfolio. But gustong magtipid, puro paper and pencil test. So, siguro kung mas maging active ang test, da, mababawasan yung 15 million. And then, yun na lang gustong tumuloy ng kolehyo. O pwede naman yung test, the ladderize, payagan silang mag -ladderize. Kasi ngayon, hindi tinatanggap sa ladderize kung hindi tapos ng high school. Ano? So, yun po sana, no, na ang test that will provide the way. Uh, well, we, we passed the Philippine Qualifications Framework uh, last Congress. And I think it would help us, uh, of course, it is a continuous uh, work in progress to... Uh, to figure out itong uh, competency requirements, pati yung uh, incorporate yung ladderized education, yung workers' mobility, etc. But let me just point out also that TESDA, during, during my time in TESDA, we launched the uh, TESDA online program. At first, we have about 10, 15,000 subscribers. You know, in a span of uh, less than a year, nag 1.2, 1.4 million ang naka-enroll dun sa online. In fact, nag nag uh, nag na ano eh, nag-slow down yung uh, yung yung makina, no? And right now, we have about 61 online courses. 61 online courses. So, kung mapalakas din sana natin ito and uh, this could probably help our our program with the alternative learning system, uh, sana magkaroon ng coordination, no, with oh. with with, with Depet kung... because still Nasa DepEd yung ano ng 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 ALSE. Oh, marami pong ALS ang nag-enroll dyan eh. Pero sana meron kayong online din na ALS or ALS community Wala na ako sa TESDA, Mama. Oh, yeah, sorry. Po. But we know, we appreciate your efforts sa TESDA. So siguro kung merong online uh, ALS kung TESDA courses, parang hindi na sila dadaan, ano? Or literacy kung livelihood. I think si Ma'am made a very good point na the literacy portion can be handled by TESDA by DepEd, and then the skills can be handled by TESTA. In that way, we shortcut a lot of the time, no? And we hit, uh, we develop the cognitive portion of the learner as well as the skills portion of the learner. Uh, we'd like to also uh, mention, uh, <coughs> listen to Pastor um, Litogo. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, we are, I'm so happy to be part of this uh, forum. I'm from Sulads in Mindanao. I have about 50 literacy centers in Mindanao. I have about 130 volunteers. Uh, what I would like to say to this forum, I would highly really s um, subscribe and gusto ko po talaga mapatibay ang ALS kasi yung ALS po sa amin ay malaking tulong. Say for example, I have one literacy center in Bukid nun. Nasa gitna po ng gira yun, yung mission school ko. But the passing rate is uh, about 80% sa ALS namin doon. Kasi yung mga bata namin, maliban sa competent yung teachers namin, yung mga volunteers namin, graduate po ng Mountain View College, MVC po. At uh, yung mga bata doon sa bundok, eh parang wala pang virus ang utak. Walang internet eh. Walang television. Walang kuryente. Mga manubo. Uh, just recently, uh, the LCC went and uh, validate the ALS. 
in my literacy center, we have about an 80% passing rate. So I would like to really promote because sa amin po, ang LCC at saka ang DepEd, kami po talagang tinulungan. Hindi po namin marating ang ang peak ng sulas ngayon. Just recently, we won, we received the Hall of Fame Award from the national level. And it's because of the DepEd of the LCC, Literacy Coordinating Council, through the program of ALS and ADM. So, uh, my point of view, Mr. Chair, uh, it is very relevant to us na malaking tulong po. Ang DepEd po ay talagang pinupost din na kami hanggang sa nalating namin itong na, na, nadata namin ngayon. Pastor, kayo nilang magpatakbo ng ALS. Yeah, I still wish, we still wish to have to triple our number of volunteers. But, uh, you know, yan ang mahirap sa amin, hindi kami mag- Mahirap with, talaga kasi 3,000 lang, lang, 3, lang po ang maibigay namin sa aming mga volunteers. And they ha- uh, mga ano sila eh, mga 120 sila sa, sa ngayon. So, kung pala rin, mag, magkakaroon ako ng mga sponsors, yeah, it's our advocacy. Inshallah. Thank you, Pastor. But it's uh, quite impressive, 80% no? yes. passing uh, rate. You can validate that one oh. or I can pass the document. No, that's why I'm asking earlier to Mr. Corpus that uh, is there any measure whether a delivery from government versus a delivery from the uh, volunteer groups, the yeah. NGOs, uh, is there any form of measure? And the reason for that is we want to make sure that every peso spent on ALS yields to positive outcome. No? Kasi limitado na yung ating pondo, pero kung sasabihin natin na 30% lang pumapasa natin, eh talagang natatapon lang yung pera natin. Dahil tinuturuan mo 600,000, pero pumapasa 120,000 lang. Tapos, uh, here comes a NGO who can deliver much better outcomes for us. No? Uh, at the end of the day, important in outcome eh. No, the delivery is just a step, no? it's just a means. But the outcome is at the end of the day that's the more important for us no? because we are trying to, as much as possible, support the programs of DepEd with hard-earned money of the taxpayers. Kaya very import- important sa atin yung measure. No? All right. Any, sir? Any? Yung 20% po na hindi nakakapasa dahil po sa sila ay manubo. Yun nga, medyo takot sila sa mga ganyang mga procedures. Tapos yung maagang pag-asawa. Pero we have that commitment to really strike the 100% rate by next year. Uh, Mr. Chair, siguro Mr. Corpus, kaya niyo ba mag-ano? Kaya niyo sabi to the committee, um, kunyari ang map, Tapos dun sa mapa na yon nakalagay in this area ilang uh, DepEd teachers and then kung anong volunteer group and students. Kaya ba yun? I mean, would you have that data? May, kaya yung i-generate po sa LIS kung where's the assignment and CLC na name of the CLCs ng mga assignment ng mga teachers natin including the volunteers. Uh, ma- so, so kaya yung kaya ano? Naman Sige, po. paka you can submit to the Sige po. committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, regarding po doon, uh, the division, in terms of uh, the, the certificate of completion, the division office are allowed to ano po, are allowed to issue the certificate. Hindi na po magagaling sa, sa central office kasi medyo mahaba. And part of the plan, of the, part of the roadmap of the, the ALS 2.0 is the online accreditation and equivalency test para po hindi po lahat umuwi pa yung mga OFW just to take the exam, Mr. Chair. Any any uh, stakeholder who want any resource person want to comment on ALS? Um, so, Ma'am Asek uh, Habitan. Uh, although alam ko na yung sasabihin niyo, but it's good to put it on record. No, uh, I think part of the uh, one of the uh, provisions the bill is to call for incentives, and uh, uh, this is precisely to spur NGOs like Pastor Pitogos organization no, to go into the ALS program, helping the government deliver the ALS program with the 
and, and giving them incentives as much as possible no? in order for them to be partners with the government. But, but, Mr. Chair, siguro bago sumagot si ASEC, pwede ko ba itanong kay Pastor, are you getting any tax break or uh, tax incentives? May ganun bang uh, encouragement? Wala, wala lahat yan. Purely advocacy lang po kasi yun ang ano namin. Uh, ang sulads po ay you know, nagka-cover na sa buong Mindanao. Lahat ng rehiyon at lahat ng lilid ng kagubatan, nasa talagang jungle po ang school namin. So, talagang pure volunteer lang po. Ako lang po ang empleyado ng isang organization. Yung 120 sinasabi ko po ay volunteers lahat. Check any comments po from DOF? Mr. Chair, uh, of course you know our position regarding fiscal incentives and the, the, our comment here would be to just um, uh, replicate the wording that we have already proposed in previous bills which also calls for similar uh, similar provisions. In any case, I also believe that in the case of education and, uh, and we have s several examples here that the more important consideration for them to become a volunteer is really the advocacy and the passion to serve uh, the people. So I think that's the and that's the thing that we should really uh, more incentivize, but not in terms of tax exemptions. It's it's the spirit. I think it's the spirit. Um, uh, another thing, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the the role of local government units must also be, and you have a provision already here regarding the use of the special education fund, because that's I think we can leverage more resources for ALS. Uh, if we are able to harness uh, the special education fund of the LGUs. I think Valenzuela is a, is a perfect example of that, uh, what, what we're doing. So perhaps Valenzuela can be uh, a model for, for the rest of the other LGUs. So can you just put on record what is the, you mentioned earlier that to just to uh, pattern the any incentives to a to the previous uh, provisions that you have uh, suggested to the Senate. Can you just put it on record, ano ba yung pattern? Mr. Yun? Chair, we still don't have the formal position paper of the DOF for the bill. We will submit that. So just take note that uh, there are two types of incentives, well, two types of organizations here. No, The organization of pastor, which is a religious organization, I would assume they will not be taking any fiscal incentives. This will be in the form of subsidy, if ever. The other ones are non-religious organizations. These are NGOs, no? CSRs, that want to endeavor in uh, alternative learning system. At ang gusto nating mangyari, yung, for example, if I'm a corporation and I want to channel my funds to alternative learning system, pwedeng deductible to, o pwedeng i-credit to sa akin. So that is the one that we are uh, yes, requesting the UF to comment yes, on. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we have a provision for that. In fact, uh, the tax code already provides an exemption with regard to that. So we will just uh, state that in our position paper. Thank you, Professor. No, uh, we also want to harness the CSR spirit of the corporations. But in order to do so, uh, we have to incentivize them no? because this is also money of their uh, shareholders the money in this case. No? Actually, yung isang pinakamagaling na ALS provider, yung uh, Motor Trade, meron silang thousands ang learners nila and they pay full-time teachers. So I think maganda. And then they dinadala sila ng field work. I mean, ano yun? Field. Uh, yun, dinadala sila sa museum. Meron silang training ng livelihood. Siyempre, Motor Trade, meron sa motorcyclo. So tagang, then they've created their own college para libre yung mga natapos ng AL sa college na yun. Ano? So, I think that's a good model na kung lahat ng mga korporasyon sa Pilipinas ay mayroong ALS component, then yung 15 million ay malaking mababawasan siya. Any comments po sa ALS? Sino pa kung gusto mag-comment mag on the bill? Sir, sige po. You can just... Uh, uh, upuna ko kayo dyan sa MT and then identify yourself and... Salamat po for the last minute. 
I'm Efren. I'm from Brac, Philippines. Uh, we are um, um, also um, implementing alternative delivery model in ARMM. And uh, uh, um, if you will allow us, we will also submit to you our policy research that we conducted with Professor. Um, what we found out in our research is the uh, importance of the LGU because it's really localized problem. We should, uh, taking us always from the perspective of the context, no? All this, lahat na nangyayaring mga problema, mga out of school youth, lahat may konteksto. So nakita namin, yung geographical isolation is really one thing na napakatotoo sa experience ni pastor, sa experience ng kamsor. Opo, mga island, magkasakit lang ang bata, talagang madidelay na yung pag-aaral niya. Walang makain, farming, uh, birth certificate. Napakalaking problema po. Uh, ang mga estudyante namin, mga walang birth certificate. So pagdating ng grade 6, mamuproblema kaming lahat. Kailangan na. So, sa simula pa lang, yung tulong ng DILG would be a big, a big plus factor. So, um, yun nga eh, lagi namin sinasabi na parang yung DepEd ang sumasalo ng lahat ng problema. Pero in fact, it's a whole um, convergence na supposed to be pagtutulog-tulungan ng DSWD, DILG, DOH. Opo. So, ng dole. So, um, napakalaking problema niya, yun, yung pag-answer doon. So, kailangan talaga lagi natin tingnan siya na may context. Pangalawa, na, ay, yung sinasabi na kanina na yung pagtingin sa curriculum, tingin namin sa ganitong discontinuous communities, kailangan natin konting i-adjust. No, may isa kaming guro na siya mismo po, volunteer teacher, senator, nag-decide siya na tanggalin yung ibang subject area. So, tinanong namin siya, bakit hindi mo itinuturo lahat? Sabi niya, hindi naman kailangan ng mga estudyante ko yan. They need to go home and help their parents for farming. So, anong itinuturo mo lang? Pagbasa at, at pagkwenta. Kasi, yung history naman daw, matututunan nila pag marunong na silang magbasa. So, yun yung mga findings namin nila, professor, during the research. So, tinawag namin siyang discontinuous communities. And how are we going to adjust our K-12? Kasi, of course, naiintindihan natin, we made a lot of investment with K-12. And we want everything to be aligned with K-12. But our contention is, is this the right time for the discontinuous communities? Na nagsasuffer, na tumatanda sila, na wala silang basic education. When we had our graduation in, one of, in, in Lano del Sur, 400 and, uh, ang graduation, 400 students. I, I gave their diploma one by one, and I asked, are you going to high school? For every 100 senator, only 10 will go to high school. Because they need to go to the central municipality. Tapos makikitira po sila sa pamilya. So, para makapag-high school. So, kami sa BRAC, nakikita namin na ang kasunod ng aming programa, which is funded by DFAT Australia, ay ALS para sa high school para makapagtapos sila. Kasi wala po silang structure. Wala din teacher na gustong magpa-assign doon sa mga bundok. And I'm sure na-experience din nila pastor yon. Kaya po, thriving ang mga NGOs, ang mga faith-based organization, kasi sila yung willing tumira sa bundok eh, para sa ating mga learners na ito. So, yun po lang yung gusto namin sabihin. When we look at ALS, that's good. We look at it at, from the policy point of view. But we, we, do, we should not lose the context, why we are having that. And that context is a discontinuous environment that our learners are experiencing. So we will provide you with that research to, to be able to at least to share our experience in Mindanao. In addition, Pana, for your information, yung K-12, that day, 700 competencies lang ang ALS. Kasi adult na to eh. Dapat yung alam mo as an adult, i-reduce mo yan into academic. Ang ginawa ng K-12, 2,000 plus. Kaya ngayon yung 30% na passing, I would swerte na siguro kung may 10% na papasa. Kasi sobrang pinahirapan nila. So parang, if you would like to save DepEd from you know embarrassment, you have to do something. Kasi ako, hirap-hirap naman, you have to teach the test. Yung mga lumang test na binigay ng ANE, nire-recycle lang para tuloy cheating, kasi meron ka ng copy ng test. 
hindi na natututong mag-isip dahil teaching to the test. And then, you know, pang 2,000 yung competencies. So, wala ka pang senior high school. So, yung nakalagay sa 9155, na dapat ang ALS, uh, equivalent siya ng basic education, dapat hanggang senior high school. Kaya eh, ang ginawa nila hanggang grade 10 lang. Alam nga naman, utusan mo yung mga adults na papasok araw-araw. So, tangang, ano, there's something problematic about the pag-insert ng K-12 sa ALS. It, you know, dapat magkaiba yun. Iba ang adult learning. So, yung 12 years, in-insert mo sa 10 months? Yeah. Parang ganun lumalabas. Oh, in, 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 uh, making yeah, it very yeah. simple, ano? Kasi K-12, equivalent, in 10 months, equivalent siya is K-12, eh. So, parang in-squeeze in natin. Parang elementary po is uh, 10 months and then senior high, I mean, secondary is another 10 yeah. months. Kasi we, we, we'll have a much deeper discussion no? because uh, kulang yung presentation na if the alternative le learning system is being employed, no? Because we don't have any tracer study. So, um, we're now reviving the alternative learning system. And from what my standpoint, there is merit to institutionalize this because we will always have students who will find formal education too tedious for them because of various reasons. Nag-aaral, nag-asawa sila na maaga. Iba, mahal. Iba, nagtatrabaho. So, government should provide an alternative mode. Ito yung alternative mode. Pero in my view, hindi nga siya na may measure at nagagastos ng mabuti. So we will have a second hearing. At be before we terminate, we'll give the last uh, microphone to um, Pastor. Yeah, akin na lang pagsamantalan tong panahon na ito kasi <laughs> hindi ko naman inaka, inaasaka, inaasaha, inaasahan na ako yung makakadalo dito. One of the highlights and one of the success story of ALS in Mindanao is that it... Uh, it solves a little bit with the insurgency problem. You know, one, one dato, a native who happened to pass the ALS, hindi, siya, hindi niya inaakala na makapasa siya ng ALS. So, anong nangyari? Binitawan niya yung armas niya. Hindi na siya naglalagi pa sa bundok. Pasado na siya, qualified na siya maging magpapatuloy sa college. So, I think... Uh, it's actually on the part of the local government unit who would also really have that uh, advocacy because for us sulads we are we have that commitment and whatever kun ano po ang na solidify ng government kami po talaga ay mag -abide. just to share with everyone no, i was just reminded my dr mayari who was our Superintendent in Valenzuela, at yung time ho namin, mayor po ako at ni Dr. Mayari, we revitalized our ELS. Kasi nga, we saw that it, it was just being done, conducted, for the sake of, to do it, no? for the sake of just to conduct it. So, what we did is we provided allowances to our mobile teachers. We increased the salary of all our ALS teachers. And more importantly, we gave them uh, materials, no? for the students to uh, take home. But the innovation into is we put the center inside the polytechnic school. Kasi nga, natuklasan namin, hindi lang sapat yung pumapasa sila ng equivalency test, kundi dapat tinitrain din sila. So the option of being trained after the equivalency test, nandoon na, no? courtesy of course of TESDA, because our polytechnic was accredited by TESDA. So, Again, no, we will have a second hearing on this, but we want to go deeper. And give us your wish list, Mr. Corpus. Later on, on the second hearing, we want to go deeper into the issues. Provide us, no, all of us, yung list nyo kung paano ma-revitalize and improve in ALS. No? And we will embed that in the law. And we will also request from our stakeholders, ano ba, specifics natin. Huwag lang in general statements, go specifics. No? Para uh, mabuo natin itong batas na ito. With that, we terminate the... Yes. Zero, last question lang. Mr. Corpus, yung salugpungan ba <coughs> part na ng ALS? Yung salugpungan schools? Salug, yung, yung, luma, yung saluman? They yes, fall under the ALS na, volunteer... Nag-ano po sila, ma'am? Nagpa-accredit sila. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
here uh, we will prepare presentation of all the 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 items then identify and we will present it during the second meeting thank you mr chair thank you so we terminate the uh, hearing on als uh, everyone can stay ah, kung gusto nyo maiwan dahil ang next natin is the bill on good manners and right conduct as uh, sponsored by senator joel winueva and senator zubiri your the option for you to stay and listen and contribute is here um, kung gusto nyo ho maiwan. Mr. Chair, for the record lang na nakakalungkot kasi kailangan natin magkaroon ng ganitong deal. Well, that's diba? true. So, with that, uh, we now open the uh, floor for Senate Bill number 310 and Senate Bill number 860. And we turn over the microphone to Senator Benoit. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Maraming maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman, for uh, uh, pag-calendar nitong uh, Senate Bill Number 860. Thank you din kay uh, Senator Nancy for being here. Talagang yung mga seatmates ang sisipag kahit na walang session ngayon at nakabreak. Nagtatrabaho pa rin po tayo. Um, again, it is my honor, Mr. Chair, to sponsor Senate Bill Number 860 or an act instituting uh, values education in the K-12 curriculum and enhancing the education sa pagpapakatao program by incorporating the teaching of good manners and right conduct or GMRC and including character building activities. In short, Mr. Chairman, the Comprehensive Values Education Act. Why comprehensive values education? If you look at the uh, Constitution's citations on the importance of education, it is obvious that it sees education primarily as values formation. Education is seen in one instance as the formation of patriotic ideals among the youth. In another, it is the formation of the values of excellence and distinction. In still another, it is recognized as the formation of the values of critical thinking, of scientific inquiry, of strong moral fiber among Filipinos. The Constitution sees education as formation of good Filipino values. We can't discount the fact that values education or education sa pagpapakatao, or ESP, is already included in the DepEd curriculum. Yet, there is clamor for the revival of good manners and right conduct or GMRC in the curriculum. And this clamor is indeed proper given the realities that we observe in our manners of conducting the affairs of the various aspects of our daily lives as Filipinos. Now, do we need to scrap values education or ESP in the DepEd curriculum and replace it with GMRC? The answer is no. This representation believes that Values education is more comprehensive and more foundational than mere teaching of GMRC. Values education answers better to our being human, yung pong uh, pagkatao natin, and becoming human, yung pong sinasabi natin pagpapakatao than mere good manners and right conduct. Mr. Chairman, values education embraces the whole person. That's why our version of the bill recognizes that the present values education curriculum is incomplete. And it is for the reason that we propose the inclusion of the teaching of good manners and right conduct character building activities in values education curriculum. Mr. Chairman, our version of the bill hopes to educate the whole person, mind, attitude, and behavior, educating the youth, in the free understanding, desiring, and owning of actions proper to the human person is the greatest and noblest, yet, but not, but only one aspect of the comprehensive values education curriculum. I'm sure, Mr. Chairman, you and I and uh, Senator Nancy will agree that the teaching of good manners and right conduct is an essential aspect of an authentic and comprehensive values education curriculum. 
Learners are to be given the chance to learn and practice practical and acceptable manners of conducting daily affairs according to the universal norms of ethics and morality. Like for example, proper way of dressing, of dining, walking, speaking, among many other things in the different situations and dimensions of life. Furthermore, let me state, Mr. Chairman, that character building activities are necessary components of the comprehensive values education curriculum where students are given actual opportunities to practice, experience, test, and deepen whatever is taught and caught in the other aspects of the comprehensive values education curriculum. Ano pa po ba ang mga iniisip nating character building activities? Maaaring kasama po rito, Mr. Chairman, yung immersions, exposures, outreach activities, community service, among other activities that provide learners the opportunity to practice and embody values in actual and authentic situations. Mr. Chairman, our Senate Bill No. 860 proposes an authentic comprehensive values education curriculum according to the principles of the 1987 Constitution and the worldview and psych psyche of the Filipino people. Maraming salamat at muli magandang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. Thank you. Thank you to the good sponsor. And uh, with that, we would like to hear from uh, the Department of Education, uh, Mr. Philippine uh, Society, so that they can contribute to, the, uh, to building a society where truth, freedom, justice, and love prevail and are sustained. Uh, the making a GMRC or Values Education a law will actually guarantee its complete implementation we need to realize that it is not a sole or the sole solution to the deteriorating moral fiber of our society. Our move should encapsulate a holistic approach that does not only educate the cognitive faculties of our learners, but must be modeled by the whole school community, which includes its stakeholders like parents, teachers, administrators, and staff. We must foster a caring environment that focuses on relationships rather than individuals. Schools must be mobilized to develop their school community and their relationship of its people. Hence, other government and non-government agencies should take part in promoting and advocating the total formation of our people. They can be asked to create programs and projects that reinforce, enrich, or even instill good character, values, positive disposition, and many more, just like in the case of gender de and development which mandates all to integrate its principles in their operation. So, uh, actually, I have here the history of uh, education sa pagpapakatao in as early as 1939, up to the current year. So, we have the Executive Order 217 in 1939, the Code of Citizenship and Ethics, uh, was outlined by then President Manuel L. Quezon and was mandated to be taught in all local schools and then followed by 1987 which I think mentioned by Senator Villanueva uh, Article 14 Section 3 we, uh, that mandates all educational institutions to inculcate among others patriotism and nationalism ethical and spiritual values and moral development then uh, in 1988 we, uh, through Deped Order nine, uh, number 6, years of 1988, we have the Values Education Framework, authored by DEC Secretary Lourdes Kosumging, was designed and was endorsed by the regional and divisional office, uh, I mean offices and schools, for the development of their localized and contextualized values education programs. Then, uh, in, Dep uh, in Deped Order 66, years of 1991, GMRC was offered as a dimension of values education in all secondary, appearing in Form 137 and Form 138 as values education slash GMRC. Uh, there are other deped issuances or orders that actually reflect that GMRC has been with us and actually renamed uh, to its newest form, which is education sa pagpapakatao. And uh, we agree with Senator Villanueva that uh, GMRC has to be uh, well pronounced in the current curriculum, which I think uh, are already being uh, practiced. So we have here the values that 
uh, GMRC or the Deaf Ed Order Number 90, series of 1991. Uh, character is the children of the 21st century has increasingly lost touch with the basic moral values that should govern their day-to-day -day life. On the onset, values formation and education start at home, but it's, it is the duty of the state to ensure that children are adequately instructed on moral values and ethics, such as being just, respectful, truthful, patriotic, among others. These values should be properly inculcated during their formative years. And this is where and when values education should come in. There should be a separate subject on values and character education that allows pedagogy to focus on moral formation of the learners. A continuing subject on values formation in the K-12 curricula shall ensure the cultivation of desirable values mindset and ethical knowledge among our learners, which shall raise them to be a just and humane individual. This is very important as this is the place where there is a need in whom their character and values. The NYC recommends to sit with DepEd in the drafting of the corresponding implementing rules and regulation of these legislati legislative measures. And the NYC and the National Youth Commission, as the voice and advocate of the youth, strongly advocates and supports the passage and enactment of this piece of legislation. Sa lukuyan, bago po pumunta dun sa mga gawain ng pag paghulma. Um, dahil po doon, nung mga nakaraang nung nakaraang dalawang taon, nung 2017 po at saka 2018, nagtulong po ang NEDA at ang NCCA sa pagkakaroon ng ganitong saliksik. Meron pong dalawang yugto yung kanilang um, pag, pagkuha ng datos. Ang una po ay ang um, focus group discussion. Nagkaroon po sila ng 37 focus group discussion. Sinikap po nila na uh, magkaroon po ng, na maging masaklaw ang FGD, kaya nagkaroon po ng cluster sa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, pati po sa NCR, na imbitahan po ang iba't ibang mga sektor, at nagkaroon din po ng um, ikalawang yugto na survey para po magkaroon ng validasyon kung, kung tama ba ang mga pinigay po na sagot ng mga uh, naimbitahan na kalahok sa FGD. Kasi po, nung nagkaroon po ng uh, bagaman kinakwento ko lang po ang resultang ito, so mainam din po na maimbitahan ng NCCA at yung mga nagpatupad po ng siliksik. Sa, sa kasalukuyan po, ang maibabahagi ko po, nagkaroon po sila ng pagkaka yung mga kalahok po sa FGD ay nagkaroon ng pagkakataon na magbigay po kung ano po yung mga halagahan. So hindi po talaga GMRC kung na pakipag uh, kapwa, kundi ang ano po yung mga bagay na pinahahalagahan nila sa kanilang buhay. At ang lumabas po doon ay meron po uh, siyempre meron pong resulta ng mga prioridad at meron pong mga sektor na nagsabi na ito yung pinahalagahan nila na hindi naman po lumabas ng sektor. Mainam na rin po kasi ang pakay naman po nung siliksik ay magkalap po at hanapin kung ano po yung pare-pareho. Kung baga mahanap po natin kung ano yung kung nasan po tayo at ano po yung common ground. Um, so, ang naging resulta po ng kanilang saliksik dun sa nakaraang dalawang taon, um, masasabi po, ito po yung, uh, well, ikinahapis din po ng, ng, kultur, ng cultural na sektor kasi nung nahanap po namin kung nasa na ang culture, medyo mababa po na nasa number nine. Um, sig, babasahin ko po sa inyo kung ano po yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng kanilang mga binigyan ng uh, halagahan. Ito po ang resulta. Ang una pong pinahalagahan ng mga Filipino ay pamilya. Ikalawa po ay ang ikatlo ay ikalawa po nagpapantay po sa ikatlong uh, baitang ang kalataya at ang kapwa. Ikaapat po ay edukasyon. Ikatlo din po ay edukasyon. So makikita po natin na hindi po siya talaga strict na hierarchy kasi meron pong mga halagahan na nagpapantay. Um Meron din pong pagpapahalaga sa pagkatao, sa work and livelihood, sa governance o pamamahala, uh, sa kalusugan, at ito na po yung sa sektor ng kultura. Kultura, pamanang kalinangan, sining at agham. Meron din pong pagpapahalaga sa karapatang pantao, kapayapaan at pag-unlad, buhay at tunguhin o life and purpose, kapaligiran, pangunahing pangailangan, 
pagkamalikhain o creative excellence, resilience o katatagan, katapatan, honesty and integrity. At nandito pa lang po ang love for country o pagmamahal sa bayan. At sumunod po doon ay kaligayahan. So makikita po natin doon sa mga nabanggit ko na meron po uh, prioridad at hindi po nagag nung nagkaroon po sila ng talakayan, hindi po fini-feed sa kanila kung ano po yung halagahan. Sila po mismo yung nag-mind map at pinag-usapan po nila bilang isang uh, grupo o cluster kung saan nila ilalagay ang mga tiyak na halagahan na sinabi na inaambag po nila doon sa sa talakayan. Masasabi po natin na hindi po lumalabas na na ang mga bagay na ito lamang ang pinahahalagahan. Pero ito po yung mga meron pong common ground. Saka po, kung sakasakali na magkaroon ng tunggalian, may, yun po yung mga uunahin nila. So yung mga unang nabanggit, ang unahin nila kaysa yung mga nasa hulihan na number 19 nga po yung happiness o kaligayahan at number 18 yung love for country. So yun po yung kalagayan natin ngayon bilang uh, dun, ayon dun sa sagot ng mga uh, na anyayahan sa FGD. Meron din po uh, validation ito sa survey pero hindi ko po mabibigay sa inyo yung datos kung paano po nila binalida sa survey results. Pero dahil po uh, survey ito, mas masaklaw po higit po dun sa 293 na naimbitahan nila sa FGD. Um, masasabi din po natin na mahalaga yung saliksik nila dahil hindi lang po tinatalakay kung ano po yung mga halagahan. Natutuklas din po nila doon sa kanilang mga panayam, saka doon sa mga FGD, kung ano po yung yung pagiging inklusibo po kasi ma, um, meron po silang bahagi ng demographics, ilan po yung babae, ilan ang lalaki, ano yung kalagayan nila sa buhay, may asawa, walang asawa, saka po kung ano po yung Uh, uh, tinapos na edukasyon. So, lahat po ay sinikap po na magkaroon ng datos. Kaya, masabi naman po natin na inklusibo po yung pamamaraan ng kanilang pagpili uh, ng mga kalahok sa FGD at sa survey. Pero, pinapakita din po sa pag-aaral kung ano po yung hierarchy at yung formation. So, dito po kasi sa, uh, ito pa lang po yung unang yugto kasi sa Kumbaga, hinahanap pa lang po natin kung ano po yung pagkakapare-pareho. Pero susunod pa pong mga yugto o susunod pa pong phase yung pagpapalaganap nito at pakipag-usap sa iba't ibang mga institusyon para magkaroon ng paghulma. So yung sinasabi ni Sir kanina sa DepEd na hindi lamang trabaho ito ng isang institusyon na DepEd na formal education kung hindi meron pong kasangkot ang lahat ng, ng uh, stakeholders sa ating lipunan. So, mahalaga doon po sa yugtong yun, yung mga nakuha po nila tungkol sa values formation, sa source, at saka kung bakit po nag-i-erode ko o kung bakit po um, bumababa sa hierarchy o sa prioridad yung ilang halagahan. So, magkakaroon kung sakasakali po ay ibibigay ko po sa sa committee ito, ang kopya nito, pero nanggaling po ito sa NCCE, kung magkakaroon po ng mga susunod na napagtalakay ng bill na ito at nais nyo pong marinig kung paano po yung datos pa po ng, at detalye kung paano po nila isinagawa ang saliksik, uh, mainam din po na maimbitahan ang mananaliksik na mula sa NCCE. Sure. Uh, just like to make a follow-up uh, question. Uh, yung ginawa pong pag-aaral at pananaliksik, ilan po ang kalahok dito? At uh, yung uh, age category or ano ho, pwedeng bigyan nyo lang ho kami ng idea kung... And you were saying na this was done in the past two years? Opo, noong 2017 saka 2018, dun sa tanong po nila kung um, ilan po ang kalahok, meron pong 293 na mga kalahok at meron pong 37 na clusters ng FGD. Um, Meron pong, doon sa tanong niyo po tungkol sa edad, um, ay, sa clustering po ayon sa lugar, sa NCR po meron pong 47 cluster, ay, 14 clusters, sa Luzon po meron pong Sham, sa Visayas meron pong 5, sa Mindanao meron pong Sham. Then the uh, age, ano ho, ma'am? 
pwedeng malaman yung kidal Meron po, po silang mga tanong na from... 7 to 14. So, malamang po meron pong kasama itong um, magulang. At meron sa age range na 15 to 30, meron pong na imbitahan na 43 para sa lalaki at 36 para sa babae. Sa age range po na 31 to 59, so ito po yung pinakamalaki, um, 88 po yung lalaki at 80 po yung babae. Para naman po sa senior citizen, 60 and above po, meron pong 14 na lalaki sa kapo, 22 na babae. At ang nag-organisa uh, nitong uh, pag-aaral at pananaliksik na ito ay ang kagawaran ng uh, kultura? Ay, at, uh, um, sa in ang KWF po kasi ay bahagi nung, nung cluster na pangkultura, pero ang nag-fund po ay ENEDA at NCCA. Opo. So nakuha ko po yung kanilang pag-aaral dahil meron na pong mga paunang pagbabalita o pagpapalaganap nung resulta, kaya naisip ko pong ibahagi ngayong umaga. Tulong po yan at uh, siguradong makakatulong sa pagbalangkas ng uh, anumang uh, uh, batas na nais naming ipasa dito sa Senado. Maraming salamat po. Yeah. Thank you. Pati uh, submit na lang yung documents. Next is uh, Professor, oh, sorry, Ms. Uh, Garcia of the City GP Board. Morning, morning ma'am. Can you, can you? Yan, pakiyan. Minamahal po namin na Senador Win. Win Gatchalian, matagal ko po kayo nakasama sa Valenzuela, taga-Valenzuela po ako. Uh, gusto ko lang, pwede po bang itouch na yung kay Senator Juan Miguel Subiri, ang good manners and right conduct niya? Kasi po, more on elementary po ako. 40 years po ako sa DepEd bilang teacher at nag na po ako. Apo, ah, sa Quezon City po. Ngayon po, ay... Dito po nakalagay sa 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 Senate Bill 310 na good manners and right conduct was removed as a regular subject and was integrated. Sa so, tagal ko po na na naging guro 40 years. Malaking kakulangan po nang mawala ang ang GMRC at na, naging na integrate na lang po sa different subjects. Kung pwede po sana, maibalik as regular subject. Sa ngayon po, dahil po ako nung mag-retard, nagpumasok na po ako sa volunteer catechist. So, nakikita ko rin po ang galaw ng mga bata. Ibang-iba po ang bata ngayon. Malaki po ang kaibahan. So, mula po nang ma-integrate yan sa different subjects, hindi ganun kadiin ang pagbibigay ng pagtuturo sa good manners and right conduct. And sometimes, kapag busy ng isang teacher sa isang subject, hindi na nai-integrate ang GMRC. So, kung pwede lang po, ibalik. Kasi po ngayon, nakita natin ang mga batay masyado na silang affected ng paggamit ng mga gadgets. Kung sila ay may good manners and right conduct na subject, Maaring maipasok ko yun, one of the topics or lesson nilang pag-aaralan, malalaman nila gaano ba ang tamang paggamit ng gadgets. Now, elementary pa lang, meron na silang mga cellphone, kung ano-ano mga gadgets, pero they do not know how to use them properly. And now, ang nangyayari po sa mga bata din sa elementary ngayon, para bang ang decision, sila na lang po nagde-decide. Hindi ka makapag tinuruan sila doon sa good manners and right conduct. Paano ba ang tamang right decision? And now, kung marami na silang problema, hindi na po napopokus yun eh, yung sa tamang pagdi-decide. Kundi, kung hindi na nila alam ang, ang tamang pagdi-decision, sometimes they lead to commit suicide. May mga nagsusuicide na pong mga estudyante ngayon. Bata pa sila. Yun po ang nakakalungkot. Eh kung, kung regular subject at ang teacher ay talagang well-trained doon, maaaring marami silang activities na gawin na magiging excited ang bata na umaten sa subject na yon. Gawa ng marami silang activities na ginagawa, maaaring malese natin yung, yung marami ng problem, problemang dumadating sa mga kabataan. 
nawawala na po yung napansin ko, nung mawala na ang GMRC po, parang hindi na nagiging close ang rapport between teachers and bata and parents at anak. So, sa akin po mahalagang ibalik. Ma'am, you said earlier, Ma'am Garcia, na 40 years who kayo nagtuturo, no? O nagturo. A ano ba ang uh, nakita niyong kaibahan ng may GMRC versus walang GMRC? Or the GMRC was, as what Mr. Bercado mentioned, na-integrate sa uh, edukasyon, pag edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, ESP for short, no? Uh, can you cite an example, no? We're in yung GMRC. Ito yung concrete example ng GMRC versus nung nawala siya at na-integrate sa edukasyon pagpapakata sa pagpapakatao. Okay. Malaki po ang pagkakaiba. Yung magbigay po kayo ng konkretong example. Sa good manners and right conduct po, they pinapresent regular subject. May mga, may mga activities, and then the last is implementation ng bata sa natutuhan nila. Pagsasabuhay, pag-uwi sa tahanan, nasa labas ng paaralan. E ngayong in-integrate, paano po yung may, in, paano po ang gagawin? Kalimbawa, ang subject ay math, ang subject ay English, or subject ay aralin pandipunan, or Pilipino. I-integrate lang po yung halimbawa. O mga bata, paano ang tamang pagtapo ng papel? Ano lang po, hindi, hindi, hindi siya talagang nabibigyan ng talagang wasto. Wasto. Dahil yun lang po, yung kaprasong yun, yung tama lang pagkilos. Ano ba ang paglinis natin gagawin? Ganun lang. Hindi ka mukha talaga ng isa siyang regular subject. So, uh, for example, ano ba yung tinuturo sa GMRC? Alimbawa po, oh. For example lang ho, based on your experience. Alimbawa po yung, isa yung pag, uh, sa, sa mga bata po, alimbawa, wastong pagtawid sa kalsada. Nasa GMRC ho yan? Nandun po yun. O, pag nakita ng mga bata, dapat ay kulay pula, kulay verde, alam na nila gagawin nila. Pero ngayon po, Hindi. Kahit alam nilang hindi dapat tumawid, tawiran na niyang tawiran. Ginagawa nila yung gusto nilang gawin. Ibig sabihin, hindi nila nasusunod yung mga, mga, mga gaba, yung mga tuntunin. Dahil wala nang nagpaalala, nakalimutan na. Because ang sinasabi niyo ho, na naipasok o na integrate itong GMRC sa mas malawak na programa, itong edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. Pag po siya ay regular subject. Pero pag integrate po, hindi siya ganoong kalalim. Okay. All right. Okay. But, but don't you think, ma'am, if I may, Mr. Chair, but don't you think, ma'am, it, it depends on how you integrate the program. For example, yung sinasabi niyo ko kanina na dati tinuro lang yung dito ang tamang pagtapon uh -huh. ng uh, basurahan. Ito yung kalat mo, dito mo itapon sa basurahan. Instead of ganun lang yung integration, ang magiging integration ay pag hindi mo tinapon itong basura mo sa tamang basurahan, ito ay maaaring magbara sa iyong estero at pag bumaha, magsasuffer ang buong uh, komunidad at ikaw at iyong sambayanan ay babahain. Pag binaha ka sa loob ng bahay mo, maaari kang magkasakit, etc. That's part of integration. Okay. So that's, that's just what I'm saying. Okay. No? Hindi ho ba uh, versus hindi natututukan or hindi akma or hindi sapat yung pag-integrate noong pong good manners and right conduct. Is that a, okay. a, 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 even as po, a, a For example an po, issue? ang subject nyo ay halimbawa ay uh, aralin uh, Pilipino or aralin, aralin pandipunan. More ang time mo ay nandun sa subject mo eh. Hindi po talaga. Ma mapapasok lang yung kung kailan dapat lang ipasok. At kadalas na napapasok sa huli na. For example, sa science, gumawa sila ng experiment. Tapos may mga, may mga devices sila, may mga ginamit sila. O, mga bata, dun nyo tamang itatapon sa, sa gaya. Up to that lang, hindi po ganun kalalim. 
kung iyan ay regular subject. But will you agree with me, ma'am, na kung ito i-integrate, dapat yung enough time and, uh, uh, ano ba tawag doon? <laughs> yung uh, nasusukat ko o oh, yung, uh, yung 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 pag-integrate uh, oh. instead it, of kailangan ng isang uh, well it, it's your position oh, no and I, i'm not uh, oh, uh, I, i respect your opinion and the for position for example po ang isang sub, ang isang subject lang ay mga 40 minutes eh siyempre po tatapusin ng teacher yung kanyang subject bibilitin niya matapos yon dahil yun ang kanyang lesson for the day paano pa po may papasok yung good manners and right conduct to ng talagang naaayon sa dapat din makuha, hindi po matatapos yun. Kaya for me, dapat po talagang ibalik ang good manners and right conduct. Mr. Chair, siguro maganda malaman sa DepEd, paano nyo nga ba ini-incorporate? Uh, Nag-uusap ko yung Senator Binay, itong edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, no? is, this a, is this a subject? A program. I think that's what we want to be enlightened, Mona. No, uh, itong how do you teach itong edukasyon sa pagpapakatao? Or or is is this a slogan na pinopromote ng ng Deaf Ed? Okay. Uh, ang edukasyon sa pagpapakatao pa isang subject na required sa isang grade school at to high school student. Uh, I mean. To be specific, I junior high school. So, And ang siguro, uh, ang Sir subject Ricardo, po ilang hours. Ah, uh, okay. Ang sa elementary po currently we have 30 minutes every day. And then for high school, it's one hour. Uh, per uh, it, it's one hour then twice a week po. So, so so we have two hours per week for high school, then 30 minutes every day for elementary as a separate subject po. So, but as a sep uh, hindi lang po doon nagtatapos yung edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. May mga values integration po. I think ito po yung binabanggit ni uh, Ms. Garcia na it's just an integrated because uh, aside from having a regular subject, There are values being integrated across learning areas and across all levels. Kaya lang po, syempre, ang nagiging challenge po sa amin currently, uh, hindi po enough yung 30 minutes for elementary to really uh, teach the subject so as to see whether this sub the learning, the competencies or the values have been uh, instilled to our learners. Kasi nga po, alam naman po natin ang sitwasyon sa public school Uh, aside po sa teaching, may mga routinary activities pa po ang isang teacher. Ganon din po yung uh, other factors. So yung 30 minutes uh, may not be enough for them to do it. So as dun sa isang, uh, sa one hour, tas twice a week lang po siya as compared dun sa ibang subjects na yung iba everyday, yung iba mas maraming time po na binibigay. Siguro, um, can you cite kung paano nila na integrate sa isang subject? Uh, sa isang subject po, halimbawa po sa uh, araling panlipunan, yung konsepto po ng isang makabayan, di-discuss po yan sa uh, halimbawa sa mga lesson na nagsasabi ng pagtangkilik sa mga sariling atin, ganun din po yung pagkilala sa mga bayani ng Pilipinas, at ganun din po yung mga kontribusyon ng mga sabihin nating mga uh, kagaya ng mga pa, uh, mga champion natin sa sports at mga ibang Pilipinong kinilala sa iba't ibang larangan, yun po ay dinidiscuss sa AP at ito po ay integrated sa makabayan na isa sa core values ng DepEd. Uh, dahil po, ang values ng DepEd ay umiikot sa four. Ito po yung makabayan, makajas, makatao, makabansa. So, ito pong mga core values na to ay naka-integrate sa iba't ibang learning areas, depende po sa lesson. Can I, can I but in the... Uh, Uh, it's it's just uh, uh, a, 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 a concern when we hear about uh, the present uh, system that we are uh, implementing. We heard about this uh, uh, study with uh, 37 clusters, year 2017-2018. 
we heard from uh, the chairperson and CEO of uh, National Youth Commission. We heard from Catholic Teachers Guild of uh, the Philippines. And, you know, even without hearing their, 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 their statements a while ago, all you need to do is, is watch a noontime show, for instance. Yung mga quiz nila na ginagawa, na pagtatanong, college na, high school na, I don't know how you would feel pag nakikita mo on national TV na ganun yung nangyayari. And I, I totally agree with you, uh, sir, uh, na it's not just the, the, the job of DepEd no, when it comes to good manners and right conduct. Itong, uh, uh, it, it takes the entire community. No? And, and I believe that. But I'm saying, what I'm saying is, at lahat tayo naniniwala, major yung role ng basic education. And perhaps, to, uh, to, uh, to talk about this in, 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 in a... Uh, 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 holistic uh, approach. Let, let's compare and, and contrast the following sub, su subject matter. No? For example, itong character education, good manners, and right conduct. CE and GMRC. In implement starting 1991 to 2002. I-compare nga po natin. Yung two yan po, compare sa edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga or values implemented naman 2003 to 2013. Yung pangatlo, ngayon itong edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. Kasama diyan yung uh, and then yung philosophy of human person and personal development and these last three uh, are, are all implemented starting 2013, no? Siguro maganda sa discussion po na ito. Ikumpara natin and uh, and, and contrast how are these three similar? And how are these three different in terms of content? Uh, can, can we talk about it? And the next question would be, yung, yung similarities and differences nila. And the next question would be, how are they being assessed? How are they being graded? Because it shows dun sa mga studies, and uh, sabi ko nga, hindi na kailangan makakita ng, ng uh, in-depth study. Just, just, just looking around and observing yung sinasabi ni... Ma'am Garcia, na ibang-iba yung mga bata ngayon. Talagang ibang-iba because we, can, we, we, we cannot blame them. Yung, yung technological revolution nandyan, yung cellphone, yung... Uh, minsan pati mga anak ko, kinakabahan ako minsan kung anong magiging decision making eh. And I'm glad nung binanggit kanina ni Miss Garcia, yung, yung anak ko seven years old, every time she would uh, do something or click something, she would go to me and ask permission if it's okay to click it. Yung, yung pumunta ka sa labas, makikita mo, ang anda, dami talagang hindi na eh. And hindi na ako lalayo, kahit nakamag-anak na lang namin eh, nakikita ko na eh. So, these are the things that we wanted to, 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 to learn, we wanted to talk about. Again, we go back dun sa, 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 sa previous uh, question that I, I, I raised. Compare this programs being implemented in 91 to 2002, itong CE at GMRC, and then from 2003 to 2013, itong uh, edukasyon pagpapahalaga or values. And then itong uh, 2013, um, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, philosophy of human person and personal development. Ano yung similarities? Ano yung uh, uh, kakaibahan, kaibahan in terms of content? And at the same time, how are we grading and assessing these uh, programs? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, in terms of GMRC, uh, in a nutshell, ito po ay tumutukoy lamang sa pagkilala at pag, uh, pagtuturo ng konsepto ng tama at mali. At ito ay uh, nagsimula noong uh, siya sabi nating uh, 1991, which, uh, uh, speaking of the grades, no? so GMRC, GMRC was offered as a dimension of values education in all secondary schools appearing in Form 137 and Form 138 as Values Education or GMRC. Then learners were rated using the average given by the values teacher, 50% in the value subject, and the overall computed GMRC grade, 50%, submitted by, the all, by all subject teachers and co-curricular advisors on the basis of learners' observable behavior. That was in 1991 to 1992. And then... Uh, Pang-grading naman yan, and yung, yung goal set dyan is... Ang objective mo is, uh, say, tama at mali. So, yung honesty, yes, politeness, 
yes, helpfulness, sir. cooperation. Apa, apa. Y- yan yung, uh, Ito po yung mga values na nakalagay sa GMRC. Uh, like uh, honesty, o pagka, maka- pagka matapat, uh, politeness, helpfulness and cooperation, obedience, and then uh, yung sportsmanship, concern for others. Ito po yung mga values na uh, ini-espouse ng JMRC that time. And then, uh, nung 1991 to the DepEd Order C- na uh, Deped Order 90 CEO of 1991 GMRC was added as a learning area in the elementary school curriculum so dati po iniintegrate lang siya ginigradean po siya ng iba't ibang subject teachers based on the observable behavior ng bata ngayon po ginawa po siyang isang subject that was in 1991 so instead of character building activities CE GMRC appeared in the revised form of 137 and form 138 So, naging isang bukod na subject po siya na may na may big may bukod na oras. So, uh, kaya po nung nung 2002 to DepEd order number 43 CEO of 2002, elementary basic education curriculum made values educa- uh, values development integral to all learning areas. Values formation became became greater focus in all subject areas, character traits of learners were rated using non-numerical marks by the class advisors and subject teachers based on the learner's observable behavior. Scope and sequence of topics for values and character education in all subject areas were provided. The competencies were integrated in the lessons of all subject areas like English, science, etc. So, naka-integrate po siya noong 2002. Uh, opo. And then, uh, come 2003, uh, through Dep Ed Order 41, uh, values education teachers were ordered to be utilized fully to help the, sub- the other subject area teachers integrate values development in the subject they teach. Essentially, teachers of all subject areas rated the learner's observable behavior, just like what has been practiced before. Then, in 2004, to Dep and Order 33, uh, class advisors and other teachers handling the class were ordered to give the rating for behavior observations. The average numerical rating for each character trait was converted to letter grade A to E, A being outstanding. That, that's how you assess and grade? Uh, po, that's in 2004. Po. Yes, uh, and po. Uh, uh, because this is not just one subject. Uh, uh, per se. It's integrated as a whole. Yes, in, 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 Kaya in po whole, yung in mga whole. subject teachers po, they also give their observation. Pa- Paano yung assessment? Sorry, I just uh, wanted to uh, during give that some time details. Po, uh, they have their checklist. They have uh, this uh, list of values and then the observable behaviors. Then they rate the students based on their observations. Apo. Uh, Can you, can you give us ano parang sample check sample list yung list what, what what's the list Sige, uh, yung check naka-checklist ho yan no na na ito yung uh, ginagawa ito yung sumusunod ba o hindi kasi yo, I, i'm asking that question because to raise the concern of uh, Miss Garcia kanina na baka dadaanan lang or et, et, at kung hindi ho nadaanan yan may ma-check makaka-check ba natin kung hindi nadaanan ito po yung pina-practice before no so Uh, yung marking for character traits, uh, yung specific indicators shall be observed in observing pupils' behavior. Then, halimbawa po yung traits, honesty, courtesy, helpfulness, and cooperation. Si teacher 1, nagbibigay siya po ng rating. And then, uh, ina-average po yung rating ni teacher 1 hanggang... Sige, gawin natin uh, ano. Honesty, paano? Pa I'm just talking. Paano gagawin sa Honesty. Uh, I'm just referring to the practice before, ha? Uh, opo. So, yung may, so yung may mga nyume, yung, yung mga grades po, may mga non-numerical uh, equivalent po sila. Like, halimbawa, yung outstanding, that is, ang numerical value niya is 95 to 100%. Then, yung poor po is 71 to 75. Tapos, Uh, dito po ginagawa po nila uh, based on daily encounter 
At kapag nagagawa po sila ng grades, they try to assess the observed behavior of students. May mga situational programs ba? Na if you are in this area or in this situation, how would you react? Na naka-integrate dito or wala? Uh, lalabas po siya dun sa, ano, sa daily encounters nila at saka sa the way they, uh, the students deal with them. Uh, A mechanism to know whether or not nagampana ng guro itong itong trabaho nito. Ah, uh, ito po ay ano, kino-consolidate po ng advisor. So kinukuha niya po. So for instance, we have eight learning areas. Si eight yung eight teachers na po doon magbibigay po ng rating sa bata bawat isa. Tas ya average so, po no, 'yun. Wait, uh, um, what I'm saying is if you assess that that okay. that particular document data that you're talking about there are eight teachers are they collaborating? Because if they're not collaborating with that particular uh, student, that means may mali. And Dama po ba? They talk it over po as a collective. Uh, so what I'm saying is there's a mechanism. Yes po. Na, po, oy, po. Deliberation po. Ang oh, po iba ng... iba to ah. Parang nagka, nagka iba yung yes, sa isang estudyante na ito. Okay. And then it raises a red flag to say, teka lang, baka mali yung assessment natin. Yes po. May ganun pong mechanism tayo sa school. That was in 2004 na talag nag-deliberate ang mga teachers on that. And then, uh, so in 2005 through Dep Ed Order 26, character education was taught and rated as a subject of Makabayan. Uh, in the elementary level, this appeared in Form 137 and Form 138 of the learners. So character education was allotted 30 minutes daily for grades 1 to 3 and 20 minutes for grades 4 to 6 using Filipino as a medium of instruction. Uh, and then come 2010, 2014 to Deped Order 76 years of 2010, edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga. So nag, nag, ano po tayo, nag evolve po tayo from GMRC to character education. Tapos nung 2014 po, ah, 2010 I mean, naging edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga. Ito na po yung values education talaga. Uh, so, Education sa pagpapahalaga, one of the eight subject areas of the 2010 secondary, secondary education curriculum was allotted 120 minutes per week for first and second years and 180 minutes per week for third and fourth years. So, ito po sa high school na po siya naipaso. And then, noong 2012 to DepEd, DepEd Order 31 series of 2012, Edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. Dito na po nagsimula yung edukasyon sa pagpapakatao or we call it personhood education. So nag-evolve po tayo nung from GMRC, what used to be a GMRC, then it became character education, then it became edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga or values education, and now we call it edukasyon sa pagpapakatao or personhood education, which is more comprehensive because we're now talking about the the total formation of a person, hindi lang po basta values. Kasi pag sabi mo natin values, it's just a segment of a total person. Hindi lang po tayo nag-uusap tungkol sa kung ano ba ang pagpapahalaga ng isang tao, kundi pinag-uusapan na po natin, an paano ba binubuo ang pagpapakatao. So, uh, so it became a separate learning area in the, en in the Enhanced Basic Education Program with focus on ethics and career guidance. So, naka-base po tayo lagi sa etika bilang batayang konsepto at uh, gabay sa edukasyon sa pagpapakata. How is it being graded and assessed? Uh, we follow the Deped Order uh, number 8, series of 2000, uh, 2015. So, uh, andyan pa rin po yung uh, written... Uh, written work, performance task, tsaka quarterly examination, yung tatlong components po, which ESP still follows. Uh, meron po tayong pen and paper examination, which is in a form of quarterly examination, quarter exam. And then yung... Yeah, yeah, hindi ko maintindihan yun eh. You, 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 you have this examination to assess yourself whether or not uh, uh, yung formation ng yung sarili. I don't get it. Paano yun? How, how, how uh, do you do that? 
Opo. Uh, it's like periodical test po na, ng, uh, like halimbawa ng Pilipino English. It's, it's test, written, diba? sabi mo. Opo. Hindi siya multiple choice. Hindi, you, you write it. Di ba? Opo. It's an Opo. essay? Uh, may mga essay part po. May mga multiple choice din po. Uh, kasi po ang ESP, uh, since binibigyang halaga, uh, nag-introduce po tayo ng mga ideya at we actually nurture the cognitive faculties of our learners to introducing the concepts of, uh, halimbawa, dignity, uh, hierarchy ng pagpapahalaga, uh, they, and mga virtues, they, they need to learn first these concepts before they can actually uh, live or practice these things. Kaya po, uh, may mga pen and paper examination po tayong binibigay. However, we recognize that we need to look for a tailored fit assessment that would really measure whether our learners are actually developing the the values or the character that we want them to have. So, uh, may mga ganun na po tayong initiatives na ginagawa ngayon that we are already uh, trying to consult the different stakeholders and even the, the regional supervisors uh, on how to come up with a tailored fit assessment. Kasi alam na, naniniwala din naman po kami that uh, ESP or education sa pagpapakatao goes beyond knowledge. So, it has to be demonstrative and observable. Kaya po, uh, ang pinakanaikita po namin ngayon ay yung portfolio assessment na mas bagay. Yeah, we, um, it's kind of in the Algem Center of Villanueva. I went to hear um, from Philippine Normal University. We have some professors who are here with us. Ma'am? Good morning po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Honorable Senator Gachalian, Honorable... Senator Villanueva and Honorable Senator Binay. So we are from the Philippine Normal University. So I and my colleague here, Professor Marte. So as you all know, Philippine Normal University is a teacher training institution. So uh, we, we train teachers and of course one of the teachers that we train I is in values education. So that's why we are very happy uh, from our end to hear that the program now is uh, being revitalized by both the Congress and, uh, and the Senate. It's because based on our uh, experience as a teacher training institution as well as a practitioner in values education for so many years, um, this subject is one of the subjects which, which has been uh, neglected of all the subjects, uh, specifically in, in basic education. And we are saddened by the fact uh, of this uh, neglect and the, the problems that we encounter in terms of its implementation. So um, uh, based on our experience, because we are uh, also in the curriculum, in the BE curriculum, so uh, we have already experienced or in practice uh, teaching values education, at least in the tertiary level. Um, teacher training and training also in service teachers in the field in values education. So we hear also feedback and problems coming from the field. So we are supervising our um, teacher practicumers and students um, because we are preparing them for the right competencies the, because we are supplying teachers in the field. So when they are already in the field, so the common problems that we hear is that values education is not really given equally importance um, in the practice or in the teaching of all the subject um, matters. That's why our joke here is would be is that uh, it's always the pinagpalang subject. No, yung pinagpalang subject should always be English, math, and science, for instance. So because they are all just given importance. But when it comes to the character values education, so medyo may neglect po tayo dito. Kaya uh, just like, uh, and it was validated by the feedback no, from, from the teachers themselves. Like for instance, just like Saturday, so we had a teacher summit, so and we have uh, teachers from ESP and Araling Nang. Ang problem po namin in teacher ed is that the subject itself is not really popular for the students to choose. Yung, yung number nung nagpupunta sa aming area, 
na values ed ay kukonti po. So, we are interviewing now uh, prospective values education majors to as an specialization. So, pupunta sila ngayon kasi magsa-second year na po sila. So, during the interview, so when we raise the, the, the question, so, ang problem, imagine yung bata na magsa-second year. So, ang feedback niya to us is this. Um, bakit ka magbabalis education? This is your first priority. Yes. Okay. So, the, ang, question, ang, sam, ang sagot po niya ay ganito. Kasi ma'am, nung nag-aral ako sa basic ed, hindi po maganda yung experience ko dun sa subject. So, therefore, this is my first priority because I would like to prove them that values education is really needed in our country and that values education should, should really be given importance because this is character education. Doctor, yes. Um, so, tanong lang ako, kasi based who dun sa sagot ng DepEd kanina, sabi nyo, there is a subject na devoted for this, na you spend 30 minutes every day for elementary and one hour twice a week. Sa tingin nyo ba, kulang ang 30 minutes? Kulang should, po. It should be, ano siya dapat? Uh, ang tingin po, kulang po, Senator, kasi... Um, nakita din namin yung naging practice na dati, one hour siya, naging 20 minutes, naging 30 minutes. Tapos, yung sa high schools kasi na, even though it's one hour, but it's just twice a week. So, therefore, it's just less than 30 minutes compared to the elementary that is every day and 30 minutes because it's five days. But, but twice, a, twice a week for 30 minutes is just actually two, two hours. Di po ba? So, ang clamor ng teachers in the field, ma'am, Talagang hindi na kami nakakarating sa processing kasi by that time na nasa processing kami, tapos na po yung 30 minutes. It's because when you try to uh, make it experiential, so they are actually giving, uh, let's say yung sabi po natin na character building activity. So there should be a, an activity, a trigger activity to start the discussion and to start the processing. So the, the, the common problem of the teachers now is that hindi na po sila nakakarating dun sa processing. So what can we expect them to do? Let's say, depending of the processing, eh, nagsisimula pa lang sila, bell na po. Time na. So therefore, wala nang kasunod. And yun pong next na kanilang gagawin for the, to continue the processing of the subject will take two days before they can continue. It's because it's just two, it's just twice a week. At least dun po sa high school. Uh, siguro po, sa aming punta is that when we teach the values education subject, so based on experience, I think in the basic education like K to 3, so the approach that we are using is more on the values inculcation. It's because they are children. So ito po yung sinasabi natin, I think, if I, if I get it right, is that because product din ako ng GMRC na yan po yung dati. Yung GMRC na directly inculcation, it's because in inculcate malinis, tinuro ang kalinisan ng teacher. Tinuro ni teacher, pero titignan niya talaga, malinis ba ang kuko ko nung pumasok ako? May dala ba akong panyong malinis nung pumasok ako? So, something like that. So, that's the kind of GMRC that I, I think that I remember when I was young. So, nun pong nasa elementary, di po ba? Tapos, pipila po ako ng tama. Ako ba'y marunong sumunod sa pila? Pag hindi marunong sumunod kay teacher, hindi po ito tamang behavior. So, something like that. Pero sa high school po, uh, we cannot do that po kasi hindi po, siya, hindi po siya inculcation pagdating sa high school because the high school is already in the stage of adolescence. So therefore, in the high school, that's why we are offering now and training our teachers to become more exper experiential in their teaching. So there has to be uh, processing and has to be that they have to arrive in such decision making where they are going to choose the right one over the wrong one. So therefore, dapat proper, dapat tama ang pinipili, good ang decision making, ginagamit ang kanilang rationality, so something like that. But effectively, ginagamit nilang kanilang empathy, ang sympathy, pakikipagkapwa, etc. So, and we all this because we would like to glorify God. So I think this is the essence of having the values education program. So, Kasi po, di ba, ang tema naman sa values ed ever since it started is yung mula sa sarili, papunta sa pakikipagkapwa-tao, papunta sa pagiging makabayan, at paglilingkod po sa Diyos. So, iyon lang naman yung gustong ituro ng values ed. But in the K-12 program, because I'm also into the curriculum, so we analyzed the curriculum and the question of our uh, Senator Villanueva, that how do we compare 
uh, all the district curriculum. Yung pong, una, yung kasing sinabi is nasa ARBEC curriculum pa yan, if I still remember. Nasa basic education curriculum, and then when they revise it, it becomes the revised basic education curriculum na naging K-12 curriculum po. So, dun sa K-12 curriculum po, if we're going to analyze the curriculum, so it's more congested right now when it comes to content. It's because yun pong, yun pong nasa career guidance, so supposedly is work of the guidance counselors, ay ipinasok din po sa values ed. So, ibig sabihin, the role of the teacher is not only as a values education teacher, but also to include being a guidance counselor as well in the... Lalo na po nawalan ng time kasi paano pa yan mag... Opo, kasi po pati po yung career guidance ay isinama. It's, maybe it's because because of the less number of guidance counselors and they see that, let's say, values education is a more allied subject when it comes to guidance. It's also because both of them are behavioral in nature, nasa behavioral science po. Pero yan din po yung isang nagiging problem ng mga teachers na nagtuturo sa field. And if I may um, say that in terms of the number po at saka yung quality of the teachers na, na nagtuturo po ng values at feedback po ito coming from the field. It's because uh, may, mga, may mga teachers po na hindi naman kasi yun yung kanilang specialization. And yung may mga teachers din po na parang meron pa nga kami na receive na feedback na yung teachers na hindi ginugusto sa ibang subjects yun ang ilalagay nila sa values education baka sakali daw po na ma-reform naman sa values education it's because formation kasi yung values magkaroon ng values yung teacher dun sa values education so therefore kami na talagang practitioner at nasa field po ng values education nasasaktan po kami sa mga ganitong ano sa mga ganitong feedback kasi ang sabi namin paano naman talaga po bubuti at magkakaroon ng epekto ng totoo kapag kaganito po ang reality natin when it comes to its implementation kasi pa we were also involved in the training of teachers especially even before po because Philippine normal before when when values ed was first in, introduced uh, became the national centrex for values education and we pay gratitude to DepEd for that but for so many years pero nawala po siya uh, sa amin so may, there was a time na hindi na namin siya nasundan tapos nabalik na lang ulit nitong K to 12 when we had the opportunity again to train teachers mass training of teachers for for values education pero before po meron pa nga kaming mga scholars yung DepEd meron po silang program ng scholarship ng supervisors in values education and scholarship of teachers in values education which is nawala na po siya so that's why uh, we, we are very happy to know na talagang I think that we really need to revitalize the program uh, it's because po that nowadays I mean in our current situation we all know for the fact that here's the industrial revolution education 4.0 and so uh, sources of information are coming anywhere in the web from the net and all so our the challenges for values education and for values teachers are really how to counteract all these things which are happening now in our society so my my uh, colleague here I think has a very uh, an end yung experience also po in values education kasi kami po ay talaga nagsusulong dadagdagan niya po kung ano po yung yung aming mga sinabi yes uh, magandang hapon po dear senators at sa lahat um, tama po yung sinabi ni Dr. Reyes tungkol sa values education uh, natuwa po ako kasi uh, kahapon sinabi po namin sa mga values education majors namin na kami ay mag attend dito so happy very happy po sila and um, very hopeful na mas lalakas po yung values education. So, salamat po from ano, uh, values education majors. And nagtanong po kanina si Senator Villanueva na uh, hindi pa possible na yung integration ay uh, magamit naman yung other subject areas for values integration. Possible po yun. At happy nga po kami na 
uh, tinap din ng every teacher is a value said teacher regardless of your uh, ano, specialization, tama po yun. Uh, siguro naman po, may paghahangad din yung ibang subject area teachers na mag-integrate ng values. It's just that they don't have the skill to properly integrate the values because we have this natural integration. Yung natural integration po na yun, ay hindi mo titignan sa ano ba yung sinasabi na dapat i-integrate natin na priority values. But then, kukunin mo po yun dun sa subject at topic mo. So, uh, Siguro po, kailangan lang mat matutunan din ng other subject area teachers para maging ka-partner namin sa character development kung how to purposefully and creatively integrate values. Kasi po, minsan ang nang nangyayari po, a natural integration. Like for example, uh, nakapag-observe po kami ng isang math teacher, excited kami nang nakita namin yung lesson pa niya na ang kanyang values integration ay faith in God. So nakaka-excite math and faith in God. So, nagturo na po si teacher ng math and all. So, nagpa-drill na, nagpa-check na. Five minutes uh, before the time, hinihintay pa rin namin sa papasok ng faith in God. So, naglilipit na po si teacher. Nung naglilipit na si teacher ng kanyang test papers, na sabi niya, by the way, mahal na mahal tayo ng Diyos. Tandaan niyo yan. <laughs> so, parang unnatural integration. Sayang. So, di ba po marami namang... Uh, I think, uh -oh. ano po, kailangan lang din ng tulong na subject area teachers on how to naturally integrate, systematic integration and natural integration of values. Thank you. So thank you. May I uh, just, uh, just to, uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Reyes, we appreciate your time and uh, your, your, your thoughts that you, you shared uh, with all of us in this uh, committee. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, the bottom line on how we put value in our values education. In some countries, I, I, I think it's Japan, wherein yung mga bata, until the age of 10, hindi sila nag-aaral lang kahit anong subject, kundi values education and love for the country. They go around the area, uh, the historical sites, talk about their heroes, etc. I think until the age of 10, until they, they start uh, learning itong math, science, uh, etc. Now, I, I, it caught my attention two things. One is when you talk about uh, the teachers of uh, values education and uh, 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 you made mention about their, uh, their, uh, their uh, dissatisfaction and uh, they themselves are saying it is not enough. They themselves are saying uh, um, kulang yung programa ng ating pamahalaan. Can, can can we get uh, siguro parang uh, recommendation from 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 your group from the teachers themselves ng uh, teaching values education what are the priorities one two three because uh, hindi naman tayo uh, mga ngako na lahat pupwedeng i-adapt ka agad no but uh, let, let's let's find out yung priorities but another thing that I'd like to raise and uh, I, I wanted to talk about this Yung estudyante mismo, when you talk about values education subject, takot ba yung estudyante bumagsak sa values education subject? Kasi in, 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 well, in my experience na, no, yung mga kaklase ko, and uh, ako na, so, huwag na tayo hong lumayo. Pag values education, hindi takot bumagsak eh, parang madali lang yan. Sasab Pag harap mo yung teacher mo, quiet ka lang. Yung kamay mo, naka, ano, tikom yung bibig mo, makinig ka lang, papasa na ako dyan. Um, yung, yung, yung idea po na yun, uh, uh, how, how do we address that if that is the case? Because if, if the students would just look at values education as a, not even a, 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 an average subject, but a subject that is, you know, just for the heck of it, just go to school and you, you'll pass the subject not talk about it and just listen to your teacher and you will pass the subject uh, how how is it is it still uh, prevail uh, prevailing uh, at this point in time uh, yes po senator so in fact yun pang yun nga po yung isa sa feedback na lumalabas so therefore so the students actually are not giving importance to the subject it's because they see also coming from their teachers who are not also giving importance to the subject. So, yun yung pinipidback nila. So, I think the situation is different uh, when, we, when we have this subject in our university because we are offering um, values education as a major subject. 
So um, in, in our experience with our students, so maybe they, they, they value the subject. It's because the kind of approach is different and the kind of teaching is really teaching the subject that really giving them importance. So therefore, in the process is that they also value themselves in a way so that to become, let's say, a, a practicing values education teacher later on. So to our disappointment, yun nga po yung naririnig naming feedback mula sa field. Na sinasabi nila, eh kasi ma, madali lang naman yung subject na yan. It's because kaya madali, siguro hindi siya properly taught the way it should be. Kasi uh, kung taking values education as a subject po is not real. It, values education kasi has also a content. So therefore, in our process of teaching the values education, there is of course still the cognitive part which is the content. So the value themselves, situations, etc. So when we talk about justice, so we talk about current events, etc. So yung mga ongoing, pressing problems with the society and all. So kung nagtuturo po ng pananampalataya, meron din eh, di ba? So coming from the biblical uh, content, um, yung ganun po. So meron din po siya. So therefore, but not hindi siya titigil ng content lang kasi so there should be valuing so therefore yung valuing that sh that should lead to the internalization on the part of their manifestation of the behavior so parang sa amin pag tinuturo namin yung values hindi lang siya inuulo ng content dapat alam mo lang ito dapat na value mo and marunong ka mag-decide and dapat that will be part of your character meaning to say even so, if you have a separate subject for GMRC or values, education, etc. Kung yung teacher, yung guro, hindi din niya kayang bigyan ng importansya in a way that the student would be able to realize the value of this particular subject. Bali, wala. Lumalabas po, even in our research results, ay ganun po yung isang nagiging problema. So, and we are happy to give you the results of our uh, research po. It's because, nandun po yung subjects na... Uh, Ah, okay no? po. So, we want to understand fully the rationale why this subject should be legislated. And it's not naman, when we do that, when we legislate this subject, it's not something unusual. It's, it's because the state feels, as legislator feels, that this is so important to our society that we need to legislate it. No? This is so vital to the development of our future generations that we need to legislate it. You know, that's why we're here to understand the rational and the logic why this subject should be legislated. So, yun po yung aming, what we're trying to pick yeah. on. Uh, uh, yes po, Mr. Chair, kasi just one comment po, sir. I think is that uh, as um, mentioned by the Senator Binay that there's really a problem because the challenge really is in terms of the values conflict, for instance, so what is going on and what should be taught. But I think with that, so there, there it seems that there, there is like a moral deterioration and the moral fiber of the society, I think, is, should be given utmost importance. So therefore, the more that we should really revitalize, and the more that we, sh we should really promote values education, I think, in the curriculum. Sir Chair, uh, Siguro, uh, we... de, just to add lang dun sa norm, um, <laughs> na parang, de, it keeps on changing for me, kasi ako, lumaki ako, pag sinabi sa ng magulang mo na uh, ganito, tatanggapin mo na lang na ganon, pero nakikita ko sa mga anak ko ngayon, hindi na ganon eh. Um, pag may sinabi ako na something, Ang next question is, why? why? <laughs> diba? Parang you have to explain why you're telling them to do certain things. Parang ganun, ganun na ngayon eh. Iba. iba. And hindi siya masama. Um, I guess kasi na-develop lang yung critical thinking ng, uh, yeah, yeah. ng mga kabataan ngayon. <laughs> hindi katulad dati. Parang hindi naman robot. But I mean, ganun yung pagkaturo sa atin eh. I'm sure just to add to the discussion. For sure. Okay. Um, can I? <laughs> well, I just wanted to 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 uh, uh, elaborate on what uh, Dr. Reyes uh, 
made mention a while ago. Not just the 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 aspect of yung uh, congested, too heavy. Uh, pati yung sa sinabi niyo kanina, and I think you should not forget that yung class size, di ba? Uh, malaking uh, bagay din po yun. Pero when you talk about education sa pagkatao, um, I think all competencies sa education sa pagkatao na sinabi ng DepEd and even dun sa hierarchy ng uh, pinapahalagahan dun sa sa ginawang pananaliksik ng komisyon sa wikang Pilipino o ng NCCA, uh, eh, nasa curriculum na nga po, no? Nasa curriculum na nga. Pero bakit ba ang taas ng clamor para magkaroon tayo o pag muling revisit at tingnan natin mabuti kung papaano ba natin pa mapapalakas itong uh, GMRC. Bakit? Kasi yung binabanggit kanina ni Sen Nancy, iba na talaga yung mundo eh. Uh, iba yung impluensya ng television sa atin. Uh, yung pinapalabas sa atin tuwing, you know, everyday na lang, manood ka ng television, napakahirap sabihin mo na yung anak mo, papabayaan mo lang manood ng television. Eh, napakahirap po. Napaka-dangerous na rin po. Yung kawalan ng disiplina. Yung students cannot form a simple line. Breakdown of everyday uh, discipline. Yung paggalang sa guro, paggalang sa magulang. Yung po at opo. Dati nung panahon namin, pag hindi ka nagpo at opo, may tama ka eh. Ay naranasan ko po yun eh. Eh minsan parang gusto mo gawin, gawin din at implement dun sa buong komunidad. No? Pero... Nagkaroon ng thin line ngayon, yung, yung abuse at saka yung uh, pagdisiplina. Uh, things like that, no? And, and again, sabi ko nga kanina, itong competency sa ESP na sinasabi ng DepEd at uh, pina, pina, uh, papahalagahan doon sa, sa pananaliksik ng NCCA, eh nasa curriculum ho, pero ang taas pa rin ng clamor. Perhaps it is because we have been focusing on cognitive aspect ng ESP. Nandun tayo sa cognitive aspect. Uh, naiintindihan ng bata ipag sinabing ano yung honesty, naiintindihan niya. Naiintindihan niya yung love of country, etc. But when you talk about o oh, napag-iwanan na kitang kita, yung behavioral aspect. Yun na yung napag-iwanan. And that's what we're looking for. I think that's what we're looking for. And that's why it's important that we discuss this uh, issue and we, we, we find solutions to address this problem. So I, I wanted to 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 just reiterate that uh, 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 in in this uh, body. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, um, kasi galing ako sa banquet ano, gumawa ko ng ethnographic sa tis sa mga school for three months. Tagang problema talaga yung behavior uh, ng mga bata. Pero ang sabi ng teachers, kasi dahil sa child protection policy, hindi na namin pwedeng ma-address yung misbehavior. And then to mga parents, dal maraming nag OFW, and then they relegate yung discipline sa mga ano, no, teachers. So yun yung struggle sila sa dahil sila maghampas ng mga bata. Pero na because of the, ano, it's, you know, it's also good. Uh, so ang nakita ko, baka wag lang sa curriculum kasi parang we feel deprofessionalized. Kung yung estado, pati yung curriculum to the detail, pinapakialaman. Siguro, you know, you let DepEd and our uh, experts do that, but maybe you can focus on the parents. Kunyari yung Sabi ko, dapat yung parents matuto ng positive discipline. Siguro kasama sa PTA program, yung pagturo kasi nga bawal na maghampas. Hindi nila alam ko ano yung tama. So I think sa mga ibang LGU, may positive discipline program kayo. So dapat may intervention sa curriculum, meron sa parents. And then yung sabi nga ni Senator Pina, totoo yun kasi we want them to speak, lalo na kung may abuse sa family. Mas gusto natin na nagsasalita sila kaysa docile and quiet. Yes. And then we emphasize rights-based education. You assert your right. So parang yung dating paradigm ay hindi na. So dapat maganda rin siguro na through the new curriculum, we can reevaluate ano ibig sabihin ng respect, ano ibig sabihin ng proper conduct uh, given the fact that you know you have to assert for your right, you have to speak up your mind, you have to have critical thinking. So yun lang po. Sir, before we would like to, meron pa tayo siyang resource person, si Ms. Rosa. Let's let Rosal. Good morning, Mr. Any Chair and um, Senator. From, uh, Actually, um, we're very grateful that you invited Teach for the Philippines to this hearing today. Um, we are yet to form a position of the policies proposed, but once that is available, we'll for sure send it to the committee. Yeah, thank you.
Ma'am Garcia, any, any more? Sa tagal ko po sa pagtuturo, 40 years, mas ma half of my life pa na ibigay ko sa pagtuturo. Ang napansin ko po sa mga bata ngayon, it's not important kung ano ba tinuturo mo, kung mat ba, English ba, aralim panlipunan o Pilipino. Ang importante sa kanila, sino ka ba bilang guro? Paano kang mag-act sa kanila bilang guro? Kaya napakahalaga talaga yung, yung mapainting pa natin lalo yung, kumbaga itatranslate natin sa Tagalog yung good manners and right conduct, kagandahang asal at mabuting pag-uugali. Kumbaga, tinitingnan nila teacher nila eh. Hindi importante sa akin. Ano ba tinuturo ng teacher ko? Pa, sino ba yung, ang importante sa akin? Sino ba sa kanila yung teacher nila? Ano nakikita nila sa teacher nila? Anong pag-ugali nakikita nila sa teacher nila? E kung na, gano'n ang kanilang inahanap, kadalasan, lalo sa elementary, vocal na rin sila. Sila sila sabi nila yung gusto nila, ayaw nila. Kung maganda ka, pupurihin ka nila. Ay, teacher, ang ganda mo ngayon. Gano'n sila ngayon. Very vocal sila. So, sa palagay ko, panahon na, it's very timely na pag-intingin natin itong subject na ito. Mr. Bercanto? Uh, we really appreciate the effort of having this uh, bill. No? And of course, we do recognize the issues and concerns raised by our uh, partners from PNU. I'm also an alumni of PNU and Values Ed teacher. Uh, Yung sa time allotment, there is really a clamor for that uh, from our teachers, no? And we are actually uh, on the process of conducting a study on this one so that we could have a data-driven policy for time allotment of ESP. And of course, yung teachers' qualifications, so to naman po yun, no? Na even when we made a survey on the uh, alignment of majorship, of teachers teaching ESP actually uh, 70 to uh, maybe or 90 percent of our teachers are not actually ESP majors. So uh, malaki pong bagay na magkaroon ng tamang qualifications o academic preparation ng aming teachers sa ESP. And uh, yung sabi po natin na uh, yung curriculum congestion we are actually doing a curriculum review, and that's one of the things that we are looking into because uh, for high school, it's quite congested, but for elementary, we observe that there are uh, competencies that are actually uh, in one quarter, there might be uh, maybe four competencies only, and we are trying to, uh, to find out how we can harmonize the elementary and high school curriculum. And then, uh, kapag ini, uh, kap if this will become a law, uh, it just speaks about how we put importance doon sa formation ng isang tao uh, other than the cognitive abilities of our students. Kasi ang napapansin po, muna, po namin, with, with the things that are happening now, mas focus tayo sa competencies and knowledge of people rather than uh, the, the qualities and the values that the people actually have. So, with this law, mas mabibigyan po ng importansya yung pagpapakatao at paano ginagamit yung talino at competency ng isang tao para sa common good ng isang bansa. So, yun po. Does that, does, does that mean that DepEd supports the institutionalization? Yes, we, we support po. Okay. And uh, we actually want to, uh, to put... Uh, emphasis on the time allotment given for ESP and the qualifications of our teachers. Hindi lang po sana yung mga pasaway sa ibang learning area ay nagiging teacher sa ESP because of the dirt. Uh, napakaliit po kasi ng values ed majors. Uh, ilan lang po kaming desensyadong values ed teachers no, sa bansa. Uh, when, when we as, as ESP supervisor po uh, when I ask my the division and regional supervisors, actually 70 to 90 percent po ay hindi ESP majors. So, uh, 
much more sa field, no? Yung mga humahawak po talaga ng teaching na, uh, ng subject. Kaya po, we support the idea of making the teacher's uh, academic preparation aligned dun sa, sa ESP. Well, definitely, uh, it's good to know that uh, DepEd supports the institutionalization of this bill. Uh, specifically, values education subject. And again, no, looking at the history, um, nagkaroon ng malaking uh, evolution and malaking uh, changes pagdating sa pagduduro ng values education. Now, one of the goals of institutionalizing this, institutionalizing this through law is to give it stability. Pag sinabi natin isang oras, isang oras yan. No, hindi nyo pwedeng palitan yan because you know, it's, it's by law. And pag sinabi natin ito yung mga components ng values education, that will be the basic components of values education. It cannot be changed because in, in this case, uh, alam ko nagkaroon ng iba-ibang components, no? yung values education. In fact, it was reduced to eduka education pagpapakatao na nag-iba rin. Ngayon, of course, what we sacrifice here is dynamism. No? Because what we're saying is in the future, values now and values 100 years from now will be the same. It means it's universal and will be the same. So that is the uh, consequence of a legislated values education uh, system. Of course, we can add along the way, but we cannot subtract. No? Kasi yan ang batas talaga. So, I, I want to uh, request from DepEd a detailed position paper on legislating values education. And I also want to request from the other stakeholders, especially uh, Philippine uh, Normal Universities, because you gave us very deep insights regarding how values education is being taught here in our country. In fact, marami ho kayong ginamit na words no, or terms. For example, deterioration, moral deterioration. No, nakakatakot ho yun. Ha? I don't think I want a country which has zero morals or a total, de totally deteriorated morality. No? That brings us to much more, uh, I guess that brings us to a to a decision that uh, we really need to look at this very closely. So we need to have a detailed position paper from you, from both of you, because like I said, if ever, this will be the first legislated subject. No? It will be the first but not unusual because that means that the legislators like us see the need and see the, uh, see the uh, necessity to legislate this para hindi yung mapalitan-palitan. No? Ibig sabihin, kahit sino man ang umupong education secretary, ganyan pa rin ho siya. No? Meron siya yung basic foundation of values education. So yun ang kailangan ho namin dahil pag nagkulang ho tayo, nagkamali, wala nang palitan ho to, mahihirapan ho tayo bumalik. So we really need to get details from you. No? Kailan ho naging last subject ang values education? 1990, tama ba ho? 1991? Sa, uh, noong Hindi, b b before naging integrated siya. Be uh, as a subject po? As a subject, as a standalone uh, subject. Wait, Is it 1998? Prior to 1991 ba? Tama ba? Uh, yeah. In 1991 po, uh, it was added as a learning area in the elementary school curriculum. And it was... Uh, combined in okay. 2002. Yes po. So Naging prior to 2002, it's a standalone subject. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so anyone who studied prior to 2002 took uh, values education and GMRC as a standalone subject. Co is that correct? Yes po. Opo. When, when we released this order po, it, it became a separate subject. In okay. Opinion. Ngayon, my question is, 20 years uh, since 2002 is about more or less, 17, 17 years. Yung mga nag-graduate, yung mga tao, yung mga bata bang kumuha ng values formation as a, values, sub, as a, values education as a standalone subject, mas mababait ba sila kaysa 
That is hard to say. <laughs> that is hard Mas to mababait ba sila kaysa sa so, ano? Kami ni Senator Nancy, mas mababait kami dahil mahaga. But kidding aside, no? mas, my, 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 my point of the matter here is I always view that everything should be measured somehow. No? Diba? We're all doing this because at one point in time, you have to make, you have to say na effective ba ito, hindi effective. Diba? Of course, I'm saying this with simplicity. No? The answer will never be simple. simple no? But I'm just putting this on the table because at one point in time, we will have to think, ito bang ginawa natin to legislate values education? Is this effective or not effective? Baka pagdating ng 20 years from now, sasabihin nila, eh, legislate, eh, mas masasama pa yung mga tao ngayon. Pero, you know what I'm saying? So, my point of the matter lang is, let's also think of a way to somehow, no, measure, quantify, or have at least some form of benchmark so that we will know that this legislated subject on values education uh, has become good for the society. This is actually a building block to have a better society. You know? And I think all of us, naman, we all want a better society. No? Wala naman gustong maging mas bulok ang ating lipunan, di ba? So, so that, I just want to put that on the table and help us think. I don't have an answer. It, the answer might not be simple, but help us think on, on, on that terms. No? Any few words? Any last words? Uh, <laughs> citing an example, I have 15 literacy centers in Tawi-Tawi. Muslim, Tausog, Sama, Bajau. As far as measurement is concerned, we have the measurement. Uh, at the end of the day, our volunteers there really I implement uh, this what we call IFL, Integration of Faith and Learning. We don't proselyte. Yes, we are Adventist, but we, we naglagay po kami talaga ng values formation. At kung subukan yung dalawin ang tawi-tawi under my Sulad's area, makikita nyo po na ang Muslim para sa akin ang tawi-tawi. Galing pa pa ako doon nung uh, nakaraang dalawang linggo. Ang tawi-tawi po, po sa amin ay isang paraiso. Muslims, I discovered, they are peace-loving people. And uh, subukan niyong dumalaw doon, sasamahan po kayo. Mamemeasure ko talaga. Yung values formation, yung integration ng faith and learning, nakikita mo talaga, mababait sila. That's all. Sige, uh, Mr. Uh, Bergando, I, I just, I just yeah, want. I, I agree. Uh, b before you say something, as mentioned by uh, Senator Nancy, by birth daw mababait tayo. And I think <laughs> we Filipinos, we have this innate goodness in us. No? When we, uh, siyempre habang lumalaki tayo, ang daming mga influencers na nakapaligid sa atin. Uh, yung mundo na ginagalawa natin. That's why this is important. Like, siguro, yeah, sensual yeah. dahil na rin sa survival, di ba? May I say mm -hmm. something, sir? Yeah, uh, uh, let me just uh, recognize first our uh, representative from DepEd. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, 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 we'll give you the floor, sir. Uh, I forget so, to mention kanina, uh, the DepEd is actually doing or updating the values uh, framework and that is actually a national conversation between and among uh, agencies and then government agencies because in 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 this uh, project we are now trying to determine what are really the values that Filipinos are actually uh, practicing or uh, believing and uh, we have also an ongoing research on the effects of the curriculum on the moral and social behavior of our students so that is something that we can uh, maybe after the research we can present to the body whether the current curriculum has something to do with the, with the behavior of our students. Mr. Joaquin? You were asking about whether uh, effective ba or what, no, yung values. Ako siguro, pinakamatanda, no, at the age of 65, we grew up dun sa napaka-strict 
na magdidisiplina ng mga magulang. Siguro kayo mga 40s uh, medyo hindi na ganoon kadisiplinado, no. Ah uh, kami tinatali pa sa puno na may langgam, no. Ito ata sa munggo eh. Uh, If we look at the current crop of politi politicians, yung mga kaedad ninyo, ano, I see so much hope for our country. That's my message. Yung aming, yung aming generasyon, we failed because I belong to the first quarter storm generation. Kami yung nangarap na pagbutihin ang Pilipinas. Kami talaga ang nagsakripisyo ang iba na mundo, binuwis ang buhay. Ako na save lang ako ng nanay ko na hindi ako na mundok. Uh, but we dream of a country that that probably was even more progressive than than Malaysia or Singapore kung hindi ninakaw yung yung aming idealismo ng mga leaders ng panahon na yon. It's it's your generation now like I I follow through yung yung mga young mayors no. Ang mayor namin napakabuti. Napakabata, the age of 44. So I, I see a lot of hope. And uh, that is a measure kung tatanungin nyo ako ng effectivity ng values education na yung pinag-uusapan ng mga subject. Kung yung mga pagbabago ngayon, eh, hindi ko pa masasabi and probably hindi ko na masisilayan yon Kung ano mga leader sila. Kung ano yung liderato ng bansa sa tingin ko, yun ang isang magandang sukatan ng effectivity ng ng pagtuturo. Maraming salamat po. Alright. Any uh, last words po from the body regarding uh, uh, values education? Meron pa tayong ano? Yes, Professor. Uh, may I request that you invite also yung aming values ed people sa College of Education next meeting. Okay. Bagong programa po namin sa oh, UP. Good. Dapat matagal na ho yan. Okay. Para... Marami din na silang sinulat oh. din. Alright. Any, any last words po? Kung wala naman po, uh, The committee deems uh, a necessity that we legislate uh, values education to give it more stability. Mr. Chair, yes. just to yes. add lang, in the next hearing, can we invite you uh, members from the early child yeah. ECCD? Because I think important din yung role nila when it comes to uh, value formation. Uh, in the next session, we will have a hearing and a TWG ready, considering this is a very simple bill lang naman. Uh, but Simple but very important for our society's future you know, because uh, from the resource persons uh, today and especially from Philippine Normal University, uh, Philippine Normal University used very powerful words that really ingrained in my head you know, that uh, there is a moral deterioration in our country. You know? If you have that, then legislators need to act kailangan nyo po kaming gumalaw and this is the move that we'll be making to legislate values education. With that po, submit to us your position paper on or before November 5, which is one week from now. Or oh, maybe gawin na lang na... Kas, oh nga, na-realize na, na, na ko holiday. Sorry. Sorry, oh, sorry. November 7? No? Sorry. Sensya na ho, ah. November 7. And let's make it as detailed as possible. No, because once we legislate this subject, there's no turning back. No, so we need to make sure that everything that we want to, to, to put in there should be included in the bill. Kung kagusto nyo, pati yung teachers, no, sabi nga ni, ni Senator Bina, yung, yung mga teachers, baka yung mga teachers ang unang dapat turuan ng values education. No, no but let's take that seriously because yung mga teachers dapat rin equipped mo na magturo. Diba? Hindi yung hindi marunong sa values education. So we can actually include in the bill as a requirement that the teachers who will teach values education should be certified in values education. Diba? Kasi eh, wala ho kasi sa bill is yan eh. No? So pwede natin ipasok doon. Or any other course, related course. No? Eh, kayo na ho mag-suggest para malagay natin sa bill. No? So... I think this is good for our society, so let's put our brains into it and uh, submit you sa amin on or before November 7. And then November 14, we will have a hearing and then after a technical working group para maplancha na ho yung batas. Alright? 
With that, I thank uh, Senator Binay for participating with us today, and of course, Senator Joel for uh, initiating this bill. Uh, I think uh, this is a good bill that we need to uh, discuss, and we will announce the next hearing for the alternative learning system. With that, thank you very much for your participation. The meeting is adjourned. Let me correct myself, meeting is suspended.
Crispy Spice Fries.